Hello everyone! Today we're gonna cover the second and last round of the Amariner Cup 1 Division 1. It is the last round. There was two rounds. Um, so, after this video we will know who was the winner of the first Amariner Cup. The true champion of the standard mode Advanced Wars by Web tournament. So, we had five players, right? If you watched the first round, you know, there were five players. We have uh, Voice of Akasha, Rip, Inkogarg, Talos, and a player that has Chinese symbols. I will maybe put the Google Translate audio to say the name, because I will probably butcher it <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> so, we have those five players, of which our Chinese symbol uh, player, according to Google, it's called in, in English, it's Dream Aaron. Okay, so our player Dream Aaron uh, timed out, kind of timed out on the first two matches of the first round. And on the second round also, like uh, this match lasted two turns and then timed out. And then on this one, it lasted like six or seven turns, something like that, and then timed out. So. I'm just not even gonna cover them because nothing really happened here. I'm just gonna cover these three matches. And so the matches are gonna be Rip against Talos. We have Voice of Akasha against Inkugark. And we have Talos against Voice of Akasha. Now, I know you all want to know the points. So let's look at some scenarios, right? So here I have a little table I made to keep track of what's going on on this tournament because it's not a, an, an elimination stage right it's like a round robin so they play against each other once against every other player and they play in two different maps so we, we already saw the first map we already saw those matches right and the results um were that rip had beat voice of akasha uh Inkugark had beaten uh rip oh and Inkugark also beat uh talos and then the the Chinese symbol player had a timed out on all of them and also timed out on this one. So each of these four players, if we just look at these four, the all four had one win, right? They already have one win each um, because of this player timing out. And so there's only going to be these little spaces that are going to really impact now the results. Here we have the total points, right? And so... If we look at who can win, right? There are, out of the four, I think, and I've taken a good amount of time to, uh, looking at this and looking at scenarios. So let's see. Can Voice of Akasha win here with only one point? Has two matches still to go. So if Voice of Akasha wins against Inkagark and against Talos, he reaches three points, which in the case that Inkagark, that only has one match to go, and it is against Voice of Akasha, um, so if Voice of Akasha wins and also wins against Talos, then it would be a tie between Voice of Akasha and Inkokark. And the first tiebreaker in that case is um, whoever won in their set. So, for example, if we just look at this isolated scenario where Voice of Akasha and Inkokark are tied at three points each, uh, because Voice of Akasha won against Inkokark, then that means that Voice of Akasha uh, wins that first tiebreaker and then would be the winner, right? So that could be one way where Voice of Akasha could win. Um, in the case for Inkogark, it's very simple. If he wins against Voice of Akasha, then he just wins. <laughs> That's it. Like, Inkogark just needs to beat Voice, Voice of Akasha. Have four points. There's no other way for Rip, Voice of Akasha, or Talos to have four points because they all lost one match. So in that case, Inkogark would win. Um, Talos, I think, cannot get the final win, even... If he gets a win and a win here, he gets three points. Um, and then he'd be tied. But I think it'll, it'll be very explained if I explain Rip's situation. So Rip can also win, maybe. If he wins against Talos, it would put, it would put Rip on three points. And say Inkugark loses to uh, Voice of Akasha. No, yeah, so if Voice of Akasha wins against Inkogark and Talos, and Rip 
also beats Talos, then that would put Voice of Akasha at 3 points, it would put Rip at 3 points, and Ingogark at 3 points, and Talos would be at 1, right? And so we would have 3 players at 3 points each, and there wouldn't be a tiebreak eh, of the first tiebreaker, because if you look at who beat each other in their own round, in their own matches, Rip had beat had beaten Voice of Akasha. Voice of Akasha would have beaten Inkogark in this scenario, and Inkogark already beat Rip. So they they all beat each other. So it would be a three way tie, <laughs> and that would take us to other tiebreakers that are set that are secret. So in the event that that happens, we'll look into them. So basically, there are three possible winners, and uh, depending on the results. And looking at that possible scenario for Talos, I don't think Talos can get to that three-way tie. Um, because if Talos beats Voice of Akasha and beats Rip, then that means that none of these two could reach three points to have that three-way tie where, you know, there's that little circle going on with Ingogark. So even if Talos wins both and Ingogark loses, I think it would just mean that Ingogark uh, takes the win there. So we have three possible number one champions. So enough. Speculation, let's look at the map. Okay, this is our map of the second round. It's called Rope Burn. It was made by Bomb. Um, it is a mixed base. It is four bases. There is two airports and there's two comm towers per player. Now, we have our little two base area over here. This is for purple, the two base area. This would be the two base area for... for I always move them up. Okay, let's fix it. There you go. Um, this will be the two base area for brown. The thing is that this two base area is a bit split, right? You got this river here cutting through the middle, so it's gonna be very awkward for vehicles to combine from these two. Yeah, you can combine infantry pretty easily, no? But for vehicles, it's gonna be very awkward because this base is also kind of responsible for this area, and also gonna want to go over here to maybe join with this one. This one is gonna be responsible for going like this into this area maybe into this area for the comm tower and possibly try to defend the hq and then we have the side bases which they're both one base with an airport so they're not necessarily weak they could be weaker than this one but more or less because copters as you'll see from the map they're going to be very strong it is very choky. You can see so many sea tiles, mountains, river tiles. Like there are very small chokes, little pathways here, this little shoal area. It is very small, and as I always say, when it's very choky, it is good for artillery, but it's also good for copters. So, copters flying around here, it's gonna be deadly. Like make a copter here, boom, you're already threatening this area. Oh, they made an enter, boom, you switch upwards and you start threading this area or, or wherever you go over here, like, copters here are gonna go crazy. And there's four airports, so there's, there's gonna be copters everywhere and a lot of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, the side bases, we got the one base, one airport over here. Uh, it's gonna be trying to fight over here, maybe trying to put pressure on the HQ if it can, and trying to go up here, probably fighting against this one base area for these cities, possibly probably also contesting this area against this base um, these bases will might want to combine you know like having control of this area right here the comm tower you can combine this base with this one have one big army and then decide whether you want to push this way or this way or whatever you want to um, same thing would happen over here with this base take control of this comm tower area and combining with this base so like Whoever controls this area, you can combine purple like this, or you can combine brown like this. That'd be really big. Same thing over here, you're gonna control this area as brown because of course your HQ is there, so you don't want it to be under, under pressure. And you can combine the vehicles of these two bases and maybe try to, oh, I always move the map, okay. <laughs> uh, you can combine the armies and contest these cities, even maybe these ones, or I don't know, this where. There's gonna be a lot. I haven't really looked at these matches, that much or at all so it's gonna be a very big surprise for me so um let's get right into it this first match is gonna be between rip and talos 
So, they both decided to go with Jake. Let's change some colors first. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave the colors as they are. Let's do that. Because these players always pick these colors, so I would feel kinda bad by changing them. So, we're gonna start off. The two base starts very slow, actually, with the, like, the two infantry having to start the captures. So it's gonna mean that the two bases are gonna be pretty slow at the start, while the one bases are gonna have a little bit of a um, head start, I guess, in the capture game. This one is probably easy. You go for the airport first. We'll see where the other image, the, again, yeah, just going for the first captures. Um, this one is gonna probably go for that airport. So let's see. There's a little chain over here for this infantry. Second infantry probably wants to go wait for this city. So you go one, you go this turn, second turn. Yeah, you probably go here. As you go one, two, three for the port maybe. So I'll have to see. You go for the airport. See who makes the first vehicle, right? So we got our first tank right here, actually, from Rip on the top left. Um, it is the earliest that Rip could make a tank, and yeah, it doesn't seem like Talos could make a, a vehicle last turn. So this is our first vehicle, and it is a tank. Now, I'm pretty sure that uh, Adder is, was banned on this map. Let me just double check. Okay, yeah, so Adder was banned here. It is a tier 4 match, which I forgot to mention. <laughs> um, but Adder was banned because copters here are just going to go crazy. And having that early plus movement is kind of strong. It's, it's, it's too strong. And so it had already proven on other divisions that Adder was too over-centralizing. Just everyone was picking Adder and, I don't know, people just didn't want to see more Adder mirrors. And so they're, they banned Adder. So now your, your, your only options are Jake, Jess, Cole, Grim, and Sanja. Grim and Sanja. No. <laughs> so you have Jake, Cole, and Jake, Cole, and Jess. Yeah, I guess you could argue argue for Cole maybe as a replacement of Adder um, because of that extra movement that he gets on the copters that Jake and Jess won't get. Jess, mm, those really bad copters, she's going to struggle a lot. It doesn't seem like a very tank-heavy map, um, but I... I can see it as as a very as being a, a very good artillery map, and so that's why I think Rip and Talos decided to go for for Jake, get that possible extra range with artilleries, just the extra firepower is really nice, and Jake's copters are are also pretty good because of that extra firepower that he gets uh, during the power on the super. He doesn't get the extra movement on the copter, but the extra firepower is very nice. Uh, he can KO other copters with the super. I think with a power, I think with a power, no, might be close though. Actually, with two towers, maybe. But with a super, I'm sure. Uh, I know that's a guaranteed kill. So, but I can also see a reason to pick Cole. So it's probably like between Jake and Cole. You know, you either want to go a more artillery, heavy approach. Uh, with some copters or you want to go more copters with coal. The thing is that you're going to get that extra movement with coal, but it's going to cost a little bit more. You know, it's going to have the plus one. It's going to take you an, uh, an extra star than you would with adder, for example. Um, or you can wait for a super for five stars to get the plus two movement and the extra firepower. There isn't, there isn't that many roads also. Like there's some roads over here. Uh, you, you always want to look at the contested space, right? Um, like say this area is full of planes, so that's really nice for Jake. Here you could argue there's some roads that would be good for coal. Um, this comp tower has like one road <laughs> next to it, a few more, but I guess there's more planes, so I, I can definitely see why uh, these two would prefer to go for Jake. So we already have this first tank from Rip moving out over here. It is not threatening any capture just yet. We had a response tank here from Talos that went upwards to kind of contest this little tank. Um, and then 
Tal's also made an artillery here. Although he had the funds to make something else. He could have made a copter. No, copter would be base kit, but he could have made a tank somewhere else. But decided to make an artillery. And we'll have to see what it makes. What what it, what it does. I, I guess it makes sense because these tanks are kind of too early. Like this tank is not really threatening anything. It's more so to be in position, possibly. We'll have to see. So there's 16 thousand already funds for rip so i'll have to see we're gonna get a tank in the middle a double tank in the middle okay so this capture is in range of this tank so i think yeah this tank is covering that capture because this one doesn't reach that was gonna move out into this area which seems to me that it's gonna be one of the contested spaces all right till we start moving out i have to see so until he could come and cover this capture, there's a copter being made over here. First copter, important. Um, he made what a copter and four infantry. That's 13k plus. I mean, he decided to make one copter and four infantry instead of making two tanks and two infantry. So uh, that's a big decision to make. Having making just one vehicle instead of two is is important because that means you have less coverage you can see like rip is gonna have three tanks maybe more this turn talos only has one tank <laughs> this tank is sitting on that comm tower as a sort of like uh, i mean it doesn't attack here because it will get retaliated just sitting there maybe not wanting i mean you could really go for an attack here you attack from the planes boom and then you have this tank backing it up does he go for it no he decides to attack this infantry uh, this tank is covering it but oh this is not in range okay oh okay so puts the infantry instead of going for this capture decides to block with this infantry and yeah it doesn't reach because there's this forest over there and he's gonna make artillery. This I'm gonna assume this artillery is gonna go down here. There's gonna be a big fight for this comm tower, most likely. Like Tal is in range now next turn to start this capture. Uh, it's interesting because this tank was covering this infantry. But so like Talos got a hit, but at the same time delayed this capture just because of this. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's funny. So, infantry is going to pull back. Tank is going to be made to cover that infantry. And we're going to get a little interrupt there. No comm tower just yet for Tal, so we get the 7-7 seven, instead of the 6-7. We're going to go for a capture now. You know, the worst thing about going for these without a comm tower is that not only it, it's not a 6-7, but it can actually be a 7-6, <laughs> which hurts so much. And yeah, Tilly's gonna sit in that city really nice. That's like, yeah, you're just never gonna get that city pretty much. Uh, the only thing is, uh, there's nothing covering this Comtar cap. There's this tank. Uh, and this tank can get a hit here, right? I'm pretty sure, like, this tank doesn't reach. This copter doesn't reach. So I'm gonna assume that this is gonna go over here. Boop. I'm gonna go for that comm tower and this comm tower. So starting a lot of caps over here in this area for a rip. Bring these two tanks together. Actually, Talos base skipping. Made triple tank and made nothing here. This tank is all alone. This tank needs to retreat. So I wouldn't be surprised if this tank goes over to the city and these two infantry just like back up because you're not gonna win against two tanks, another tank on copter, like, yeah. Gotta be careful. Um, so Tal is gonna start this capture over here. Got this first copter from Tal's, and yeah, just the first copter from Rip right now. Now I'm starting to see the chaos of mixed base, right? <laughs> There's so many units everywhere and so many little fronts 
but it's crazy because it's so different from the the previous map right this one's so choky like look at these tiny friends look at these tiny little um one tile paths like they have to do there's this also this little bridge in the middle <laughs> to like front switch if you want you could also artillery lock like rip could bring an artillery sit it here and lock at this base or over here lock at this base uh tank is gonna retreat yeah okay it's gonna hide behind here I'm gonna make another copter i would be surprised if we started seeing copter spamming right now um why didn't that tank attack that infantry the other turn though? Hmm. I'm gonna go back a second. Yeah, this guy. It went back. Hmm. Maybe, maybe because if it attacks from here, it can then get trapped by these infantries and then the copter takes it out. I'm gonna assume it's something like that. So yeah. Um, where were we? So yeah, this is Rip's turn. Gonna get, gonna get double com tower. Gonna get this is little fighter over here for the city. Gonna get this little interrupt. Same city is being uh, fighted for. Gonna start this capture. And we're gonna make an artillery over here. Another anti-air. Gonna really st start to make those anti-airs to have an answer to these copters. But it's interesting because you see, you start to see all this army now. Uh, all these infantry are finishing their captures, and now they need somewhere to go, right? Where do they go? Do they? There's nothing in the middle. You can try to go this way. There's only one seat to fight for. It seems like they're gonna try to go over here, and you can start really abusing of, the, of that chokiness with, like, for those artilleries. So you put an infantry, you block with another one, you put their two behind, and it's gonna be really hard to break through and attack the artillery. So. Uh, Tal is gonna get that com tower. Actually, yeah, both of them have the two com towers each. I'm gonna go for an interrupt on this city right here. I'm gonna keep on fighting over there. The tank retreats a lot. I'm gonna try to sit up here at the fence, try to contest these two cities. Well, this one, because this one is gonna be for rip. And looks like the most contested cities so far are these two. And this city right here, the one across the bridge. And also probably this one right here. It's still neutral. And although Rip is in range to start ca capturing, Tal is also in range to uh, interrupt that capture. Gonna get a 2 KO there. Gonna bring this imagery actually. Okay, so instead of going this way, this imagery gonna go towards the right. Okay, these are gonna go down here. Okay, so it looks like this artillery is going to probably go down here then. Like, interrupt this capture, set up the artillery, block off here. That could be really nice. Gonna get some shots. Finish out that imagery, finish out the other one. Get this one in range to start this capture next turn. Yeah, keep on interrupting over here. There is this tank in range, so this, so this tank can go boop. Take this guy out. Till you're gonna come in and... I think it's just locking this city, pretty much, from a distance. And I don't think the tank could reach one, two, three, four, five, six. No, okay, so you don't really need to cover it. This infantry could go somewhere else. Bring more infantry to maybe contest here. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so infantry is gonna take that out. Probably the tank is gonna take this guy out. Boom. These guys are gonna move in to get try to get this city. It's really, really tight, right? Like there's not a lot of space. Very, very different from the other map where it was very open. Tanks were just like swinging from one side to another. We got a copter right in the middle of the map, which is very annoying. Say you make a tank here, boom, you just start hitting it with, with this copter. <laughs> like there isn't another tile to hit this copter than the base, so you have to like Move off the tank, use the entire boop to take it out, and you're just base blocking yourself. That's really annoying. It's probably not worth it though to sacrifice a copter like that. But I don't know. Especially if there's more entire, right? So actually, 
Atalus is going to go for this capture, although it is in range of this artillery. But probably the idea is to overwhelm it. So there's this artillery um, pointing at this tile, which is the one that defends the artillery. So, like, say this guy attacks here, boom, and these stay here, then Talos can easily shoot this, finish it off with another infantry, tank, boom, and then start the capture again. So, we'll have to see what Rip decides to do. Okay, decides to shoot at it. It is also in range of this base. And it's gonna start this capture as well. This artillery, was it just made? One, two, three, two, three, four, five. Mm. Okay, so really trying to contest this city and kind of giving up on this corner for Rip. But there isn't any healthy infantry from Talos to try to get these cities. Hmm. And not gonna go for that city, it looks like. They're kind of equal income. The only difference is that uh, Rip has this city, which Talos does not have. That's the only difference right now. Kind of pulling back by Rip on the south here, because there's all these vehicles coming in, all these two tanks, copter, and Rip doesn't have the vehicle support. They're kind of invested over here to defend this city from this little army from Talos. Got a little tap there on the on Talos' artillery, but these guys are probably gonna die. Uh, we'll have to see if Talos really wants to keep up a fight in this area, which is one base range, rather than one, one, two, three, four, five, six, kinda like two, maybe three turns from this base. It is two, ba two turns from this airport, so that could help. Double tank. And yeah, it doesn't go for this capture yet I'm gonna pull back right heal that guy up I'm gonna get a little tap there with a copter because it is blocking this tank is blocking this anti from moving in and I get that KO there bring this infantry in range of the city bring the tank bring the other one bring the other copter oof there's a lot of pressure it's also pressuring their HQ you gotta gotta be careful if all this army is stuck here too much then these two armies could kind of sneak up onto this HQ. Uh, we're gonna get up. Well, two KO on that imagery. Probably with the two com towers plus the planes here. It was 130 and then the 120. Not sure if it's a roll or if it's guaranteed. And a KO there actually retreats the artillery. Um, not sure why to this tile right here. One, two, three. Maybe just away from this inventory. Okay, tanks going in to attack this artillery and this inventory. And leaves this copter, which is somewhat in range of this anti-air, but you'd have to kill these two tanks. I mean, just one of them, but you, uh, I don't think Grip can, because you can only get one hit from here and another one from, hit from here. So yeah, it doesn't seem like any of those tanks could be killed, which would enable this anti-air to go in and pop, kill that copter. Now make another copter, just kind of sitting back here. It, it seems like in both scenarios, this base or this area is under a lot of pressure and very limited in what it can do. Because uh, this base kind of invested a lot over here and also maybe from the infantry movement, the capture phase, it kind of ended up down here. So it's kind of putting a lot of pressure onto this one base. Trying to defend the city, trying to defend the HQ area. All this is being taken out. And it looks like Rip is going to move in over here, try to uh, overrun this comm tower, try to flip it. Actually flips this city, the little bridge city. So it has a tiny income lead. Tanks from this area are actually going to move down south to contest these vehicles over here. And he's gonna get the first strikes over here on these two tanks. Gonna block off this copter from, I guess, hitting this tank. From the mountain. Same with this one. Just tanks and there's a lot of eagles. Like, the vast majority of Rip's army is in this area. <laughs> 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tanks. One, two, three anti-airs, copter. Like yeah, and more of them even coming down here. Just putting a lot of focus down here, trying to defend from this uh, this attack, this kind of pincer strike from Talos, no? Well, over here, there's not that much fire. Like, there's no vehicles over here. All of them kind of shifted downwards. There's only this infantry. And um, so it doesn't seem like Rip is planning on trying to flip these or attack the HQ. And over here, there's not that much because they, the most of them went down here to take out these and try to flip these. Well, Talos was already defending and now we'll see what he decides to do with these few vehicles. But most likely, I mean, most importantly, this see what he does with this. So actually, this infantry is going to not get that capture and dangerously getting close to that HQ. <laughs> and he's going to put the tank right in front of this tank without attacking. So you know that that the only reason why you would do that is to block, to just create a blocking. And if you look closely, there's no way for Rip to take out this tank. Because you would need two units, right? But only this tank can attack. And then you would need a copter. But this copter is not in range. This copter is not in range. And I don't see any other copter or artillery to attack. Or a mech even. But no. So this guy cannot be taken out. Mm, I think, yeah, no. Impossible. So it's like a little plug. These guys are kind of stuck here. You can get a first strike. But that's it. Copter is going to come in. Attack from the river. Take out that. 2 HP artillery. Gonna take out some of these infantries and use this tank to attack from there. So this HQ threat is real and it is happening. Kind of bringing everything. Wouldn't be surprised if it's, yeah. Even these tanks are just gonna move in as well. Oof. Yeah, this is an, an HQ move. Gonna make a fighter even. You know why the fighter is made? It's not to deal with copters. This fighter is a blocker. This fighter is like, oh, I know what the fighter is going to do. <laughs> wow. So this fighter is just going to sit here probably on this one tile passage. Like you get a first strike here and then you move back the tank and you put the fighter. And then that's another, like you can only hit it with one anti and it takes two turns to kill that fighter. So this fighter and this tank are just going to be stopping all these land vehicles from supporting this area. Because... Talos still needs two turns, right? He needs two turns of fully capturing that HQ to actually win. And we're getting somewhat close to the superpowers. Uh, so he has to be careful. It is looking like a very all-in move. Because if this, if this doesn't work out for Talos, this HQ attack doesn't work out, it's going to put him at a very big army disadvantage. So let's see. This is getting spicy. <laughs> So let's see, Rip, what can you do here? Can you attack here? I mean, you kind of have to bring everything. You can't even get an attack on this tank though. Oof, which really hurts. Yeah, and Rip resigns. GG. Wow, what a game. What a, what a move by Talos. Just pressuring this area a lot to f make a rip focus all the army in this area and then all of a sudden boom just move everything down here when there wasn't a lot here uh most of the, these vehicles were trying to they were contesting this this space they were also trying to contest this space like rip was a little bit all over the the area of the map even here as well and with that little fight of Taos, if maybe the, the fight from Taos at the very beginning, as I was saying, he maybe he went for the HQ, then it, it probably wouldn't have worked out because then Rip could have contested it. But because the fight took place over here, then it forced Rip to like really focus in this area and then whoop, just shift downwards when this army could also at the same time come down here. And then it's no longer a pincer strike. Like this is not a pincer strike down here. This is like it joined in that area like this army is joined down here and like rip cannot attack this tank so rip is going to be stuck here this is going to attack here i mean don't even look at this because this the, then tell us just going to move off the tank put the fighter like this gonna, that's this army is going to be stuck here for like four turns um and so this is the army that really matters and these copters 
And so Rip can kind of move in here, but even then, Taos can just like send every copter, boom, 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 like start attacking at everything. Yeah, you'll lose the copters. There's four of them. <laughs> you can lose two copters every turn, and you can put the tanks here and everything, and all these images are just gonna block, and then you start to capture with this guy. So it seems very unstoppable by Taos. So very nicely played, yeah, very fast. That was a fast game too. Wow. Okay, so that means that Rip gets a loss and Talos gets a win. This means that Rip will... I think Rip is not able to win now. Yeah, because Rip had to win this game to potentially get into a three-way tie. So Rip losing has two losses will not be the winner of this cup. Let's move to the next match. Okay, we have our second match and it is Talos against Voice of Akasha. I swear, I, I can't believe there was this tournament finals with all these huge names. Talos, Rip, Voice of Akasha, Inkagarg, just insane. Really, really, really insane. So, I love that, that they both picked uh, Armor Blaze and Purple Lightning, perfect. It is their colors that they always use and they just match really nicely. So that's awesome. What I also like is that they have different CEOs. So as we have Talos in with Jake in Purple Lightning, as he also used in the match that we just saw against Rip, we have Voice of Akasha in Amber Blaze who picked Cole. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a different approach by Voice of Akasha just by having more copters probably and uh, just the, the threat of the extra plus one movement from the first power the normal power might make it really awkward because the thing also is that you can zone out your enemy's copters just with that just by having the power or even like <laughs> like this has happened to me before like you can just threaten that oh i'm gonna sack I'm gonna sacrifice a copter against your anti-air, which gives me enough charge to then use a power, and then all of my copters are now in range of your copters, and then I can just go pop, 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 first strike on all of your copters. And so you don't even have to have the charge, you can just be like here. Now you have like two two stars. But just the threat of like don't like careful, don't keep an anti-air in range of one of my copters, because then I can sack it and then all of my copters are gonna attack your copters or something like that. So it can get tricky really fast. Position-wise, it is, it is insane. And if there's someone that is a master at positioning, it is Voice of Akasha. Yeah, he really is a master at that. Um, let's see, we're gonna get the first tank. Actually, Tal decides not to make a tank, although having the funds. So it's nice to just have an extra infantry. Interesting. We'll see, will Voice of Akasha make a tank? Probably, with this amount of funds. And you also have enough inventory, maybe from here? Okay, yeah, makes a tank from this space. And Talos, interestingly, kinda rushing this city. Oh no, actually no, because it, it, this inventory goes over here and then it goes. Yeah, it went like this and now it's over here. So never mind. Which is the same thing that Voice of Akasha is doing. Okay. We got tank artillery by Talos. So this artillery will most likely go down here, try to contest these two bridge cities. We'll see. There's definitely a timing thing here, right? Like Talos can start this capture. No, sorry. Voice of Akasha can start this capture and Talos can pop, interrupt it. Well, it doesn't seem like here Voice of Akasha can do the same thing. Oh, this imagery is probably going to go for that port. We're going to get a copter over here in the south and a base skip by Voice of Akasha. Doesn't go for the interrupt, decides to go for the city instead. So these two imagery are just going to like look at each other from across the bridge capturing each other's city and we're gonna get that over there and this tank is gonna be supporting here instead of 
like in case that uh, Voice of Akasha decides to have a little tank attack there, it's gonna deter that. Okay, and makes an anti air here in response to his copter because if that battle does start, like tank, tank, and then copter comes in, boop, you do need this anti air like this turn. If not, it's not gonna it's not gonna make it in time to attack that uh, copter. So yeah, we're gonna get that port first. Gotta gotta rush it as well as tiles. This infantry probably goes over here now for this little chain. It is interesting how these infantry. It, you would assume that there would be more infantry over here, but no. There's only one that goes for this port, and then it's kind of all, all alone, because you're gonna have one that's gonna go for this city. This one is going to go for this one. And then these guys kind of go this way to try to contest this comb tower. Maybe go for this city right here. Like this guy goes boop, boop, boop. So these two bases are responsible for a lot. Like the all this chunk of the map. So it is it's quite a bit. There you go. We got the double capture there. Uh, we'll see if the tower decides to get an interrupt there. It'll be kind of like a dead infantry. So probably not worth it there's only two infantry here this one's in range to start that capture next turn we're gonna bring this one probably to go down here get this city yeah gonna yeah, just gonna back up just out of range of that tank and the copter but this infantry is also in range to uh, interrupt this capture on the comm tower and this artillery is pointing at that city so it's kind of like get off that city i'm gonna get it so you can a voice of Akasha moves out, you start a capture, you put the artillery on the city, and that's like, oof. And this copter... Ooh, these copters are... These copters are so deadly. Like, you need... Talos needed this copter to contest this copter in this area, right? Because if this copter goes up, and then it can attack, boop, you needed that this, this turn to contest that. Or else nothing else would reach. But... You also have to decide because this copter can go this way and it can harass this area and it won't be in time because you either you either made a copter here or you make an anti over here. So it's tricky. These copters. You, you, you gotta pick where they can get damage on you. You see, now this copter is over here, it's kinda like centralized. It points at this comp tower, it also ranges this guy right here. So it can get some harassment, like, and if you make an anti here, it's not gonna reach two, four, six. You can attack it from here, from the river. Oof. We gotta get this copter that is gonna protect a lot. It's gonna protect that comm tower cap. It's also gonna, hmm, like deter this capture right here. But I think two, four, six. Yeah, it's not. Even if you make an anti here, it won't be able to reach to attack the copter in response. Uh, there's just no vehicles here from Talos actually. They're all being made on the one base areas. And I guess the same thing for Voice of Akasha. Wow. So like the two base area is the one that's under the most threat <laughs> just because all the vehicles are being made on the one base areas. Can I get this capture here? Now I get this anti -air. The guy gonna go over there. We're gonna go for the interrupt on the comp tower. Um, start that capture with our two on the city. This guy's supporting for a joint cap or something. And this copter. Okay, this copter is just gonna support. Start that capture over there. Get the comp tower. Start that capture. Gonna get that into up there. And yeah, we're gonna get a little boop on that infantry. It also blocks off the path, which is really annoying. Hmm. We're gonna have this image in range to capture this, this one for this. We're gonna continue that capture, not a counter, okay? Um, and support it with more infantry, probably? Okay, yeah. Gonna interrupt there, so sacrificing it, but also having the artillery in range so as to prevent this city from ever getting captured. This copter cannot reach. Oof. Oh no, I was thinking, like, what if you had this copter on this tile? 
and then it could reach that R2. It does one, two, three, four, five. But you can just put this infantry over here, and then you wouldn't be able to reach. And make an anti air tank. Okay. Oof, it is getting. It's getting spicy. There's so much going on. And I get this comm tower here. Get the double comm tower. Image is probably going to go this way. And God is going to come in. Boom. Take out that guy. And we're not going to continue this capture because of the artillery there. Uh, I guess you could argue that you could. Because then, like, oh, you want to you wanna attack? I want to attack with, with my copter. But Voice of Akash, I made another copter. So this guy can uh, cover the copter. Also, he can just make an entire here, so and it is in range. And actually, not gonna start that capture there just because this cop is in range. So, yeah, that's that. I'm gonna move in with some guys, some more guys here. Probably gonna inst like instead of going for this city, this actually might go and try to take this city. Would you can like start a capture and put that to you over here? <laughs> it's gonna be really hard to attack. I uh, got this anti-air, this other anti-air, just from this one copter, it's wrecking havoc. Everything is sort of in range. Yeah. Okay, so that copter cannot go unpunished anymore. And over here, it looks like Voice of Agasha is going to get the second comp tower. Yep, there we go. Copter just going to sit in that city to delay this capture a little bit more. Bring some more infantry. And I pull back. Are you going to leave that? Probably not. Yeah, just leave it there, pointing at it. Got the copter there defending the artillery. This one does not reach. Mm, Got to get these guys in range to defend the city. Make an artillery to most likely do the same thing. Like, uh, if Tao decides to start capturing, you interrupt, you put the artillery behind. That's just a classic. Classic. Interrupt, point artillery to like permanently de deny the capture. And then it's like really tricky, like there's an artillery putting at that city, how am I gonna flip that? Cause then it forces you to overextend to attack that artillery. You have to really have a lot of vehicles to be able to invest doing that without dying in response. And even getting the city, like it's really tricky. It's a pretty strong tactic, that one. And start this capture over here, right in front of that anti here. I'm gonna bring this copter, which technically is in range of the entire. If this guy gets taken out, but I'm gonna assume there's gonna be a tank or something. Oh, wait, actually, no. Actually, uh, Talos cannot take this guy out because this one does not reach. Okay. So that copter is safe. Yeah. Oof. Mmm. Let's see, if you look at the board, who do you think has a better position right now? I feel like the one that has more initiative is Voice of Akasha, but it is so tiny. Like, the, it is very small initiatives, like this one over here, um, this one over here. We do need a tank though, because if not, this anti is gonna really uh, just chase everything out from this. So, this tank is probably gonna go down here you have this other tank but it is a little bit far away still and it feels to me like Taos is more reacting like the initiatives that Taos was taking is this one but it got denied it's looking to be this one as well but it is also likely going to be denied because of the interrupt artillery setup uh, and that's probably about it then it's mostly reacting over here and reacting over here so let's see and I get that kill there, bring the other infantry to, yeah, probably keep interrupting this capture. Gonna start that capture, put the two behind. Again, this is just probably to, like the result is just gonna be Talos taking out units because he's not gonna get that city. You interrupt, you put the two, I mean this copter. This copter is in range to point at a possible R2 position. Say if it sits here, boop, from the C tile. Sits here, boop. Although, I think you can probably block it as voice of Akasha. Mm. That copter. Maybe this copter should have gone somewhere else. 
uh, maybe on this mountain, because now I think you hit here, then you put the artillery on this tile right here, and then you can put the, the entire like on this plains tile, infantry here, and another infantry here, and then he, this copter cannot hit from here because there's going to be an infantry which he cannot take out as tiles. And then this infantry you can't take out because, I mean, the, there's an anti here, so you can't take that anti out. There's not no tank, and this this one's not in range. Uh, and yeah, so that would be safe for Voice of Akasha. So maybe if the copter was here, then it could have threatened from hitting on this side. Uh, maybe not because then, as it's not threatening this tile, instead of having an infantry here, you would just put one here. Oof, uh, complicated. I we'll have to open the move planner and look it up, but I trust on Talos's better positioning than mine. Talos is definitely a better player than I am, <laughs> so there's probably there's definitely a reason for the way he positions units. <clears throat> I feel like Talos is a very similar, he also has a very good positioning as he goes for this interrupt over here. Um, he's very careful of exactly which tile he positions units as they're threatening stuff, which is the same thing that Voice of Akasha does. There's something that you really need to get good at at the really high level because it's just how, how efficient you can be with the units every single turn. The more things that you can threaten, uh, or the more things that you can defend from threats, like, they're just, it's crazy. So we're gonna go to hit KO. It looks like I to hit KO, yeah. Oh, and I actually put Star 3 on the silo. Okay. anti on this tie. Oh, never mind. Oh, it makes another one, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And down goes the tank. Or else this anti is gonna go crazy. Not gonna start any capture just yet, but we'll see if we're gonna start seeing this pressure on the HQ. So looks like Tal is gonna set up a defense here, just like yeah, I'm 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 good. I'm not gonna go for those two cities. I'm just gonna chill here on my HQ. No worries. Bring down the mech, the anti-air. Gonna go for an int up there from the planes for like the firepower. I'm gonna blast that infantry and. I guess you can't attack this infantry without getting retaliated on, so maybe we're not gonna attack it. Try to set up down here, possibly go for that capture. There is this R2 though, so I'm not sure what the plan is down here. Um, and I bring these copters, we're seeing copters everywhere. We got this copter here. Look, remember what I was saying, like, they are one tile away, but if you get a power, boop, you get a, a tap there. So I gotta be very, really, really, really careful. Um, Captain Copter counts. We have one, two over here for Voice of Akasha, and we have one, and then one, two over here. We got so five for Tal. We have one, two over here, and then we have one, two, three over here. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing Copter every single turn now. And this is only day 11. Uh, mixed base is crazy. We're gonna start this capture here by Voice of Akasha. This is gonna force a fight from Taos, an investment of vehicles. Probably, uh, okay, we're gonna, okay, we're gonna finish off that guy there. Oh, actually got the killer, so we're gonna get a shot there with artillery. Gonna sit in that city again to like, deny this capture a little bit longer. It is just out of range. <clears throat> and we're not gonna go for that city. At all of this, Voice of Akasha has slight income lead, just 2k above Talos. Not that big of a difference. Uh, uh, not that big of a difference, really. Uh, unit count are very similar. Unit value. It looks like Voice of Akasha is a little bit ahead than Talos. Uh, but we'll have to see. It's it's not really that big of a deal just yet. Talos is gonna. This actually has been all over. The... Oh, I always move the map. Is that good? Yeah. Um, this is has been all over the world. Has been here trying to get this city. Then that was denied. It was trying to get this city. Then that was denied. And now it's gonna try to get this city over here, or 
possibly potentially go for an HQ threat kind of thing. So I'll have to see. So yeah, we're gonna sit there, point at that city, block, be like, move off, or you're gonna get shot at. Um, Copter just gonna sit there. It's gonna bring some more guys over here. We start a capture, We're trying to go for a little pincer strike here in the HQ. Bring the two copters. Actually, it's not gonna go for an attack over here. Um, just gonna give up the city because if I guess you could like use this, I don't know, tank here and then interrupt with an infantry. But there is just an overwhelming amount. Like, there's three tanks, a copter, and a lot of infantry. So you would be sacrificing the very little army you have in this area to just not even deny the flip, just delay it. It, it would only be delaying it for one turn, really, at the cost of two vehicles and all of your army in this area, which is important. So we're gonna make another tank. It kind of seems like these are guy, like these guys are gonna go over here, but we'll have to see. Maybe Tal is gonna go for another HQ threat, you know. It already worked for him against the rip, so maybe, you know, it might work again. Well, we'll have to see. So, we're gonna move down here, kind of defend this area. It, I mean, Voice of Agatha doesn't have that much down here. There's this copter, few infantry, and then there's one copter tank, few infantry. So, like, Talos is, has a much bigger army in this area, so it does not seem to me like Voice of Agatha could start uh, an HU cap threat anytime soon um it's like voice of agasha's army is mostly here there's like three tanks one copter so this might push this way this is playing pretty differently from last match so voice of agasha is gonna get this flip now he's 3k ahead um due to having this double city and um, what other what other city uh, this one. He has this one, which Talos does not have. So, now this army, what is he going to do? So, one option would be good to somewhat pressure this area. But you know what always happens when you threaten a base? They make a medium tank. And if you don't have a response to a medium tank, then it's like, uh, what do I do now? So, it looks like these guys are kind of going towards here. Maybe go for this city. Um, trying to position a little bit better. This artillery is gonna <laughs> just like sit there probably. These guys are gonna go upwards. This is definitely a threat by tail, so Voice of Akasha needs to respond. That's why this tank is going upwards. This anti like this movement is so awkward. Remember what Talos did last last um, match was just blocking this area like this one. So he has to be careful about that. Um gonna regroup over here, bring that anti-air, get a little interrupt there. Bring the copter tank, and there's lots of anti-airs because, yeah, there's lots of copters. And there's also a good unit to um, one-hit one hit KO. You, know? you can one-hit KO copters and infantry. And when there's not a lot of tiles, that is extremely important. Because, oh, sure, you can attack a copter with your copter, but if it's if that copter is blocking a tile that you need to access to like st uh, stop an HQ cap or something, you need an anti-air. You cannot just hit it with a copter. You need an anti-air. Oh, this copter is just going to sit there again. <laughs> um, yeah. This other, I guess, could have gone here to like deter that copter. But maybe it had, it had other plans. I think it's kind of covering this guy right here. And... Oh, we're just waiting every unit. Okay. Oof. Lots of pressure. Lots of decisions. Like, if you're you're in... Like, say, you're Talos right now. Ooh, you have to think, what do I do? What... Do I even go for this city? This seems like an impossible city. Just like, might as well just like point at it with this artillery. Um, I guess you could try to go for the city. This would probably be the most likely city that you can get. Maybe these two, like there isn't that many vehicles from Voice of Akasha or this one as well. If this entire was like, uh, I guess this one came from over here. So this is the maximum movement. But if you could somewhat reach this city, then you could already be threatening to cap it. Um, here it's a little bit trickier the fact that these guys are taking up these tiles is not gonna make it easy for voice uh, for tiles to join these two little armies 
So, yeah, the fact, and there's also a lot of vehicles in range. So it's not going to be that easy for Talos to try to go for this. Kind of needs, I feel like he kind of needs more tanks too, because there's a lot of anti airs and his most of his army is made of from copters and infantry so i mean there's only one tank one artillery artilleries are not not that great against anti -airs. i mean they do a lot of damage no but anti -airs just run around so for an artillery to hit an anti -air, you kind of have to like have it sit in range of the artillery <laughs> which is is not gonna happen for free you know the classic is like attacking with a copter and defending your copter with an artillery so that if they attack with the anti-air, then you kill it with your artillery. But it's kind of tricky to set up. So it looks like, yeah, Talos is just all the vehicles that were down here, they're like, ah, uh, yeah, you know, let's just send everything up here. So that's the two tanks that are going to be needed here to deal with anti -airs are going to be coming from this side. And it looks like we're going to give up on that little city. This artillery is still pointing at this tile, so as to like uh, delete anything that's blocking it, and then we can get a little boop, a little interrupt. Uh, but I do think that Talos needs to do something because this income lead is going to start catching up with it with a with the army value. Because if you look, um, Voice of Akasha, like at the start of the turn, he is only behind by 5k in unit value. So, and he's ahead of 3k income. So every turn that goes by, that's is gonna put him a little bit ahead, a little bit. Like if five turns go by, ten turns go by, he's gonna have a bigger army than Talos. Bigger army means more threats, means more property flips, maybe an HQ flip. Like he can do stuff with army. So Voice of Akasha is not gonna go for anything down here. It's just kind of like retreating and defending this city. It seems. Pulling back the artillery also to just point at the the front tile. Gonna go for this city with artillery behind it. Kind of get a little tap on that uh, infantry in the mountain because there's no way to access, like no, no way for an anti-air to hit that copter. Uh, and just bringing all these copters and tanks. It, it doesn't look like Voice of Akasha is interested at all in going for the HQ, but keeping maybe the threat there real, you know, it, like in the last game, if Talos kind of brings everything towards here, then he can shift downwards. Uh, it, definitely a very important little pivot point. We're going to get a little tank attack there. Interesting. Mm, maybe because maybe these tanks are not in range, and so if you send a copter, then... I can start killing your your cobbles in my anti-air. Mm -hmm. Okay, make some artillery here. And we're just gonna wait every single unit. Okay. <laughs> now it's Talos' turn. Oof. Yeah, I mean you have to interrupt this for sure. You okay, we're gonna go for this city. Talos definitely needs to start flipping some stuff. We, we can't just leave it at a stalemate because if not you know there is a day limit as a copter goes and takes out that tank there is a day limit which is day 30 or 35 i can't remember um and whoever has the most properties by then um if no one has resigned then wins so currently if this goes on for another 20 turns which is a lot um but the current state if they just like sit and do nothing then voice of agasha would win and tell is going to sacrifice that little Injured infantry to delay this capture makes a medium tank And it doesn't seem like he's gonna go for that city. Maybe possibly gonna go for this one somewhat just shifting this infantry and And just standing back and very way back also like putting this artillery back here really far away from that city So pretty much conceding that capture um, probably scared from these copters as they can get the plus one like this copter could get the plus one movement and hit this copter and if that happens actually it tells us how way it doesn't have a way of killing it I guess from the base like you move this medium tank you attack boom let's see and they're gonna boom kill that copter so just increasing the unit value difference even more as now at the start of the turn of Voice of Akasha, he is 4k ahead in unit value. Uh, then again, 
when unit value is so big, like we're at 200K value, which is a lot, and 50 units, I think the unit limit is like 65. Um, to make it significant, you need to have a very big lead, like a very big number advantage, because even at 200K, if you're behind in numbers, it's not that important. It's more so the position because with 200K value, you can still pack a punch and you can kill many copters in one turn and just get a bunch of vehicle first strikes and destroy their army, although they have like a little bit more unit value. So it's still for anyone to win this match. Like <laughs> it looks like Waste Arcade is going to move forward a little bit, pointing at this city now, uh, since there's no vehicles threatening here. So uh, also has like it's threatening this comp tower cap and this city cap. So this R2 can go and protect these. Probably gonna have a copter, yeah, to deter one of these copters from defending. Could make an anti or two. Uh, we're gonna make a tank copter, no, just infantry. So we're just gonna deter these copters with our own copters. And we're just gonna call this here, just cap here, no, no joint cap it seems. Uh, so yeah, just going for like the more income approach and not really going for an HQ cap as like Tal is really solidifying here in the HQ area and Waze Watch is just like, eh, I'm just, I'm good here. I'm just going to go for this city and I'm just going to defend here as long as I can until this army from Tal's that is building up decides to go somewhere. Like it could very easily just go like, boom, charge somewhere or charge this way. So we'll, we'll have to see what he has to do. But yeah, brings this tank, brings this copter so as to present a, a counter to this little threat and even brings another tank and another copter um, and now it's getting really cheeky because we have the powers halfway through so we have to be careful of how we position stuff because if one player goes for a bunch of attacks that creates a lot of charge then they can get the super and gets the extra movement and then it can get a lot of attacks. Like, for example, say like Voice of Akasha gets uh, the super next turn somehow, then he can use two infantries to like take out this guy, and then this copter can get a first strike, bah! and then we start a capture, and then I don't know, this copter can also get the plus two movement, boom, hit this tank, and so that's why there's this copter also in range kind of protecting. In case that that happens, it can attack that copter. Um, just gotta be careful of stuff like that. So it gets very tricky. You start to move plan and it's like, what if, if I put stuff like this, what if he attacks here and then he gets the charge and uses a super, like, oof, it is very complicated. You gotta be very careful. Uh, kinda gonna retreat from here. It's not even gonna go for the kill on the anti -air. So just like, gave a, gave a tank uh, I mean, gave a copter to kill a tank, which I think is worth it because it's just it's a 2k difference, which doesn't really matter that much and it is an extra unit but at this point it doesn't even really matter for any of them <laughs> it's more so charge than anything else but I don't think that Taos wants to start a fight here like tank tank and then all this army is in range to support this single anti-air and it would kind of beat this army there's just way more. Like, look how much. There's five anti-airs. There's four tanks. There's three copters. Like, yeah. And it's not like this army could support it because then this army is just going to sit in this area and it's going to prevent this army to, from doing anything. And it could wreck. So I think it's smart for Talos to like not even engage there. It's fine. I'm going to bring these copters. And now that the voice of Gacha has this city, which puts him at 4k income lead, He's going to start this capture, just very slow progress by Voice of Akasha, just one city at a time, just one. Puts a lot of threats here or there. Now we're going to the next one, has his artillery behind. Um, actually, because of all these vehicles coming in to reinforce this, decides to like, okay, actually, I'm good. I'm not going to go for these. It's still good to have the threat. Like these, this guy is still threatening this city capture. We're gonna interrupt this capture right here. Um, we're gonna get these guys in range of this city to protect it. 
having the classic artillery pointing at the tire in front just to clear it in case they want to block it. And we're gonna bring a few vehicles downwards, it seems. Hmm. Will these go down here, maybe? We'll have to see. We're gonna build a bomber. Yeah, I love bombers. And it's a double base kit bomber. Wow. And Talos is actually going to start this capture. So Talos is getting a little bit impatient and with reason because he is behind on income and he is behind on unit value like 229 for Talos and 262 for voice of Arisa. That's what, 30 something difference? That's, it's not huge, but it's, it's still a number, you know, it's still army. And you can start to feel it like the fact that's like what, five, six, more vehicles that Voice of Akasha has. And yes, you can still build, no? Like it's still be before he starts building. It's also before any fights, but it doesn't seem like Talos can have any favorable fights to like turn that value around. It's just a matter of putting threats and then starting a fight that would be beneficial for him. So he's gonna actually start attacking this area. This army's gonna pour down here to the left. Uh, I'm just gonna defend here. I'm gonna have to respect this bomber too very soon because like one turn, two turns again can be attacking. So we're gonna make more anti-airs. There is never enough anti-airs to deal with a bomber. <laughs> Bombers are just really, really good. <laughs> and I can definitely see this map really good for bombers because like it's really good for copters. And so it's gonna be amazing for bombers. It's gonna put so much threats everywhere. And the moment that you don't respect the bomber, boom, you start losing units left and right. We're actually gonna take out this guy. Gonna start a little fight here. Um, pulling back here, the artillery. It's gonna really, really pull back. Uh, so this artillery is kind of covering these two tanks, really, from across the river. And just very defensively over here, it seems. We're gonna go in for some infantry attacks with these tanks as we're getting really close to the powers too. Even brings in this artillery and the other artillery to cover this other artillery. Uh, as as Talos had moved away all of these tanks, this medium tank, even this artillery, these two tanks. There's only one tank here in range and this one mech. So there's not really much that can hit these two tanks. Actually just like one tank. This medium tank could get the block rock but it can't even reach any of those two tanks. So, oof, that's going to be complicated. So, Voice of Russia taking that advan uh, that opportunity, not going for the HQ, just like here, boom, I'm just going to get a free attack here, put a lot of pressure since he decided to go this way, and makes another bomber. Wow. got to love those bombers. And something that I always try to advise and I like to do is when you're getting to the unit limit, like, look at those, it's 57 and 59. I think the unit limit is... 65 so they're only like one or two turns away from reaching unit limit at that point it's okay to start base keeping as voice of akasha because like it doesn't really matter you, you can't build more than the unit limit and the, another good thing is to start making tech ups because as you start reaching that unit limit you want to be more efficient with the the units that you have like and the money and the units that you have so like you know you're getting to a unit limit instead of making Triple tank, just make a Neo tank or make a bomber or something like that. Uh, and Talos decides to resign. Wow. Oof. Wow. Just, I'm just amazed at the, the gameplay by Voice of Akasha in this one. Just very, very meticulous. Very, very patient. Tile by tile. And city by city. Just like putting pressure, little pressure here and there, and denying the pressure from Talos. It was definitely, it always felt like Voice of Akasha had the. Uh, the initiative the whole game and Talos was responding to Voice of Akasha in the vast majority of the game Talos was trying to put pressure in certain parts to, to like you know not be always reacting so that, that's really good that's what you want to be doing but Voice of Akasha was always like one step ahead like as soon as Talos was setting up to attack a city Voice of Akasha was had just the setup to interrupt and deny that flip and was just able to defend just really nicely, secured this area to avoid Talos from joining this 
like, like the armies and going for a few cap um had a had a nice really uh a, a, a nice threat down here to to the point where Taos was like oh i need to defend my hq and this area and like eventually slowly but surely i was able to get this city and then got this city and just had a big income lead slowly the unit uh, value was starting to increase as there was like little fights and then Taos got impatient you know which is Okay, like yeah, he, yeah, like you're behind on income and on properties. There is a day limit, so you need to do something. And so decided to that maybe the best idea was to attack this area where there was the least amount of units or vehicles from Voice of Akasha. But by doing so, it made it justified this bomber buy, which is now like oof for Talos, and it also allowed Voice of Akasha just to like come in and it's not like this army is gonna do that much. Um, like you can do a tank here, maybe a medium tank. I mean, I mean, I guess you could possibly take this base. There's all these copters pointing at this base and there's all, all these artilleries. So stuff is really far away from defending. Um, I think, well, yeah, I, I think you could actually really threaten the space. Like you would be forced as Talos to make a medium tank because a tank would just get to hit KO easily and then blocked by another copter. This artillery is protecting both tanks so the tank that decides to attack just gonna get blasted away and you can use all these units they're all gonna have plus two movement too, too so you can anything that's in here you can kill it and block and then you're gonna overrun the base we even got the bomber very close so it can also help deal with like a neo tank or a bomber or a mega tank or something like that so very very slow but effective progress by voice of akasha which is like really insane to see so this leaves us with the last match so let's go there okay we're down to the last match of this tournament not, not only of this round this whole tournament the mariner cup won and as we've seen already from the results and as we've talked in the intro already this means that Rip cannot win, right? Because Rip lost against Talos, so that leaves him at two points. That means that Talos cannot win because Talos has uh, two defeats and so has uh, also two points. So both Rip and Talos are left at two points, if I'm not wrong. And this means that currently Inkogark has three points, Voice of Akasha has two points, and our last match is Voice of Akasha and Inkogark. So, if Inkogark wins here, he wins the tournament with four points. If Voice of Akasha wins this, this match, it ties him with Inkogark at three points each. But, as the first tiebreaker is who wins their set. And that in that case that Voice of Akasha would win, it would make him win. So one of these two will be the winner of the tournament and it is really crazy uh because these two are most likely like these are if you're if you're new here like if if this is one of the first matches that you're seeing of advanced wars by web or you know competitive advanced wars these two names are two of the biggest names uh it, when it comes to standard most of all, because Voice of Agasha only plays Standard and High Funds, doesn't play Fog. If we're talking about Fog, then there's other people as well. But in Standard, Voice of Akasha and Inkogark are, are gonna be right there at the very top of your list. They're definitely, they were, they were definitely the favorites for the, for these finals, you know, from the five. You know, as in like, if you, if you have to bet, you know, of like who's gonna win or something like, you know when you have to bet money and they're like oh these are the odds that so and so like these two would probably be at the very top like this would give you the least amount of money if you bet <laughs> because everyone's gonna be betting on them um but yeah it is insane to have this as the last match of the tournament and it is the deciding match so um i'm gonna change ingogarik's color so we have voice of akasha in Amber Blaze, which is the color that he always uses, and it is also my favorite color. 
And we have Ingegarg in the Penguins, although he didn't use the Penguins, he used uh, Yellow Comet. I think Ingegarg has said that he always just uses the default color of the maps. Um, and as we have the, the sideways penguins, we have these two, the starting penguins are going to be looking the other side. Um, so, yeah, we got our top two standard players fighting it out on this last match of the first Mariner Cup. Whoever wins this match will be crowned the winner of the first Mariner Cup. I say first because there are more. <laughs> There's a second Mariner Cup, there is a third Mariner Cup. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to cover all of them. There is just a lot. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. If you if you guys like these tournament series, let me know. Um, I, I do know that there is a few people that really like them, that really like to have these covered. I enjoy it a lot. I personally like to cover these matches, uh, although they're on the same map and it is a very long video. Maybe for some people it's like really long. Uh, I know maybe some people just like to watch one match replay of like 30 minutes, but I don't know. For me, sometimes that's just too short. You don't you don't get to like really analyze what's going on and maybe appreciate the the thoughts of the players or what are the strategies and the tactics involved. So I, I kind of try to deep dive a little bit, not too much because I mean, of course, you could like dive as deep as you want in, in any of these matches really you could just open the move plan and start doing a million simulations of each turn but it's like okay at, at what point is that uh, um worth it now like and you have to like make a script so that it's not like so that you're not thinking with that in the moment so that it's not boring so it's like a lot so i just try to do this live as i see things moving um i just hope you guys like it and if you do, let me know. Uh, it, it really does help me understand and it, it also motivates me a lot, which is like literally the number one reason why I keep doing this is just the motivation. Because without motivation, I just wouldn't be doing it. So yeah, um, we're gonna get a very similar capture phase as we were having in these other matches. Uh, so it'll be funny to see where the the side penguins, the the Freds, the you know, as Go Seven says, we have two Freds here. Really, <laughs> we don't have one Fred. We have two Freds. Uh, they're your little FTA counter penguins. I think it's interesting that this guy was rushed instead of going. He went one, two, three instead of just going one, two, and then going for that city. Just it's like skipping one capture in order to rush this one one turn earlier. Everything else seems very similar to the other matches that we had seen. We got the first tank from Voice of Akasha over here, which is similar to what Rip had done on the first match against Voice of Akasha. No, against uh, against Talos. Was it Talos? Yeah, it was Talos. And then we got Inkakark making a tank here to respond to that tank. Because like, if this tank wasn't made that last turn over here, then this tank could get a hit over here, right? So that's why this tank has to be made on this base. So I can be made, move, and then deter this tank from interrupting this guy right here. So it's kinda, it's a little bit forced, this tank right here, to defend this and ensure this little bridge city. And I think, yeah, not even an artillery, because if you make an artillery, it only reaches this forest, so it's not enough to protect the, the infantry. We're gonna have these guys move there. Mm, I'm gonna have Copter here from Boys of Akasha. Copter... Uh, I think he could have made a tank. If you make a tank, that's two extra, that's five. Uh, I guess you could make a tank and an artillery. Or maybe double tank. Because Copter and four infantry, that's 13k, right? Yeah. Plus three, that's 16. Oh, you can, you can make two tanks to infantry. So again, an another important decision here of deciding to make one vehicle, copter, if you <laughs> call copters vehicles, which we tend to do in Advanced Wars by Web, uh, is it is a flying vehicle. <laughs> I mean, are copters considered vehicles in real life? I don't know. Anyways, decides to make one vehicle, the copter, instead of two land vehicles, like two tanks 
or a tank uh, artillery, for example. It's always important to decide. Engorg is not going to go here, which I think makes sense because uh, nothing is going to be able to defend it from a double tap here from these guys. Um, and something that I forgot to mention is that they're both Cole in this match. Instead of having Jake Mirror or Jake Cole, it is just double Cole. So valuing again the extra movement from the power, the three star plus one movement, very important. Very strong, you know, uh, get that plus one movement on every unit and the copters, which copters, as we've already seen, go crazy here. We haven't seen much fighting. We haven't even seen a single power on any of these matches just yet. Isn't that crazy? Not a single power has been used. They all these the, the past two matches have finished before any power was used. So we'll have to see if a power gets used here. If we get to that stage, it, there seems to be just a very big unit build up before that happens, uh, which kind of creates large unit value armies. <laughs> Sometimes I get stuck on what I'm trying to say, and then I'm like, huh? Um, we got the <laughs> got the little penguins looking, protecting each other's backs. Um, where's the other one? Here's the other one. We're gonna go for this comp tower by Ingegark. It looks like now we are going to try to go over here. I mean, this tank is protecting this comp tower cap from these guys, and there isn't a tank by, but this copter I think can reach goes here and it goes two, four, six. So no, so this copter cannot defend. Oh wait, it actually can, yeah, yeah. It goes here and then it goes two, four, six. It just needs to reach these two tiles. So this copter can defend and interrupt here. That copter's gonna be really strong. I think uh, this base is really strong. The, 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 I mean, this airport, this, this one airport is so strong. I feel like it's much stronger than this one. But I might be wrong. I don't know. I feel like this one has always has been creating so many threats. Uh, like last game from Voice of Akasha, the, same, the first copter he made was from this airport, which was this one, and it created so many like decisions for. Uh, oh, I forget now. For Talos, for Talos to make. And so Voice of Akasha is gonna go for this bridge city, which Ingugar just like completely conceded. Like, yeah, you can just have it. I'm not even gonna have anything in range to. Um, Deny it, but as we've seen, as we've seen, this city is not really the contested one. It is this one. So we'll see. Wizavagasha is going for this com tower as well. I mean, this guy over here and brings the tank. It is sort of. I mean, it's also in range of this guy right here. It's kind of like pointing this area. If this tank decides to like go down. It's gonna force a tank or a copter here to defend. Um, but this can also give Voice of Russia the option to go towards down here to maybe answer this tank, possibly. I think it's a little bit late though. It's gonna take like an extra turn. Let's see where the copter goes. Okay, it's gonna sit there. Just gonna threaten some stuff. And going south and we are going to interrupt that not gonna get the the ko without any com towers maybe with this 110 firepower there's a slight chance of getting that when you have two attacks of 110 it is like a 33 percent chance but in this case it was one of 110 and one of 100. we're also going to go for the city capture uh, in front of these two penguins um, oh, I just realized they're all facing like the same, same side. There you go. Now they're facing opposite sides. Um, so I think is going to get this comm tower and, and I'm moving to get this city. Oh, look at that. So Inkogark is going to get this city, which has been contested on most of our matches. Just this one right here. So. Maybe due to these infantry movements from Voice of Akasha, sending more downwards. Or maybe just Inkogark's speeding up this capture a little bit. We are going to interrupt this capture right here. Tank is going to get a hit there. Um, 
Imagery lives to be healed up. That tank is not gonna be attacked. Like, there's nothing in range. This cop is not in range. Attack is not in range. Uh, so, it's looking very overwhelming here for Voice of Akashi, so he definitely needs to retreat. I don't think he would, he would be able to sustain an attack here. Lots of copters. We're just getting this copter chain, double copter turn. Um, and I guess the same thing here. They're both going very hard on this comm tower area. Just kind of joining this base and this base airport into this area right here. Um, so, Voice of Akasha is going to get both comm towers. And it's going to start to get this capture. And Ingegaard is like, you can just have it, I'm fine. <laughs> Like there's nothing in range, not even like, not even a single infantry in range to to point at it. <laughs> like no, no, you, you can have it. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, this infantry is gonna move in, pointing at the city, possibly capture or interrupt. Uh, and this this infantry actually went to attack. Like they just went into. Like this one got the lucky roll there, and these guys are gonna go there. But all three of these are going to die. And there's gonna be no more infantry for Voice of Akasha in this area whatsoever. They're all up here now. We're gonna start this capture. Probably, yeah, back it up with another infantry. But the thing is that these copters are gonna be really annoying, so probably need an ant here. I don't think it reaches because you'd make one. Unless you go this way, like you go two, four, six, two, four, five, six, maybe? Yeah, ant here. So I think because. If this if this corridor is secured by Voice of Agasha, then this anti can deter a copter. But there's a tank here too. Okay, the tank never mind. The tank went this way. So this anti is gonna be free to go towards this corridor and prevent any copter from harassing this. And yeah, these guys are gonna die. This one is also going to die. These imagery are gonna come back to point at that city. Probably gonna make an anti here. Oh, and just another copter again. Okay. So put this copter in front of this one with another one backing it up. This copter is protecting these guys. Tank is gonna go towards comm tower area. This entire sort of in this corridor. Copter is gonna go this way. Let's see if he goes for an interrupt. Okay, this is gonna get that little kill there. Does not go for an interrupt, okay. So I guess what you can do with this setup is you do copter two four six and then infantry hit from here boom take it out and then you start the capture or you get a hit so now this anti is to this side i think that's probably the play because this if this anti goes this way and you do that that anti cannot reach because it can only reach from the city right it goes two four six two four five six but if you have the two imagery here and you can't clear them then you can't attack the copter so that's nice and if you go this way you go, like, you sit, you sit here, and then you one, two, three, four, five, six. You can't reach that copter. Or five, six. Yeah, it's one tire short. So that maybe that's why this this little setup to possibly do that might make the entire not get the value that it wanted. Gonna get these guys. This is also something that you can do. Just put the tank in front. Not necessarily on it. I mean, it didn't reach. I guess I'm sure he would have wanted it to be sitting on the city, but you can also just put it next to it so that they can start a capture, but not block this tile. So then if you want to, you can use a tank to interrupt, but you can just move back the tank and use an infantry. So you kind of secure this tile. These infantry are going to move in to point at that city, possibly start a capture. And these guys are also pointing at this city. Always got to look for those infantry pointing at cities. It is... It is vital. It is... Oh, wow. Look at that. Voice of Akasha read that. He saw that little setup and I was like, yeah, I I don't want to get um, hit for free, so I'm just not even going to finish that capture. And we're just going to wait every single unit. Okay. <laughs> Ingegarg finally gets the second Comtar, gets the city. I think they're even on income. Yeah, they're both at 27k. They both have the bridge cities. Uh, these two cities are the only ones that are neutral. Oof. And they both have their own cities here on, on this little side. 
So let's see what happens now. This is now we're moving into like the next stage. It's like okay, we all got like the our cities, the contested ones. There's a few more contested ones, and they're in the HQ area. So that's dangerous. <laughs> Gotta make sure to set up a nice defense there. So now it's big decisions. What to do with your army? Where do you go? Where do you invest? Where do you attack? Do you attack? And I bring these guys in, bring these two copters. We're not even going to go over here, it seems like. I'm going to bring these guys, yeah, just pulling back the penguins. There's nothing really to defend here, so... I mean, these penguins were more so of a setup to possibly uh, get the city, because you can go, like, tap, and then from the river tap, and then you start a, a capture. But there's a lot of infantry here in range, so... You can get a hit here, boop. Then you get another one here from the city, and then this one from the forest, pop. So you get a first strike on all three. So yeah, it would probably not be a good idea. And these are probably just going to move down here, try to pressure the HQ. These cities are not contested. I, they're just way too close. <laughs> and way too far for this base to really keep the pressure on, no? Um, all these vehicles kind of reinforcing the HQ area. Copter just moving one tile. That one tile... I think it's just so to be just out of range of that copter from a possible power. Um, it might also, I don't know, range something in Voice of Akasha's plan. We're not going to start this capture. No, it doesn't seem that we're going to start this capture. I think I wouldn't be surprised to see an artillery here to like then eventually get this city. Copter going to go in the middle. Oof, double copter in the middle. And setting up all these imagery to defend the city, even the anti-air. Just all these vehicles over here. Yeah, there, I knew it. I, I knew it. I knew there was going to be an artillery. <laughs> this artillery is going to be to attack this city. I'm going to make another artillery. This one is probably to do the same thing as before. The little, oh, you start the capture. I interrupt it. I put the artillery behind it. And... Just gonna defend here as well. Oof, it is getting tense now. And Ingeborg is gonna move in. I mean, not attack, but looks like we're gonna block here. We're gonna start a capture. Okay, we're gonna block there, which is just out of range from both of these antires. I mean, don't look at this one, just like this way. Start a capture, and yeah, these tanks. Th I mean, Boys of Akasha can get a, a tank attack here. And. I guess it's unfortunate that there isn't another tank in range. But that is going to mean that Ingogarg is going to get the city. We're just going to put him in the property lead, which is important. Again, it is a very stally map, <laughs> as we've seen many times. And as, wow, I hadn't noticed, Ingogarg also made an activity. And it is nicely two turns away just from like having the perfect setup on that uh, city. Like this tile is just insane. Putting that artillery right here. It is behind the river and a mountain, and there's this forest also. Like, you can only hit that artillery with a copter. <laughs> That's insane. Um, it is definitely a very stolly map, as, as we've seen. Like, there isn't a lot of fighting, but there's a lot of pressure going on. Very, very positional. Which, you know, depends who you ask in the community. It can be a nightmare or not. I know there's some players that enjoy it a lot. Um, it is, I mean, it's tricky. It's just, it can definitely be a nightmare. It's very move planner intensive. If you've seen my uh, video on my match against Grim Guy, it is all about position. And Voice of Akasha does go for that little first strike on the tank. Gotta get, gonna get some of that vehicle value and it's gonna get also a little uh, attack here. You see? So it's one hit there and then the anterior gets the kill, get the two KO and then sits on the city. Gets the strike too. So, maybe this anti-air goes unpunished? Mm, well, you can still, you can still sack this infantry, use the copter. Oh wait, no, this tank can't reach. Look, two, four, six, it will need a power. It needs to go through the city, so it has to go two, four, five, six. Hmm, I wonder if maybe... Oof. Well, I think this tank... I think you can sack this guy. 
Oof, maybe you can't. You can't kill that. I think this tank can reach. With the sacrifice in the tank, you might kill that. And then you need a power really to reach, huh? Yeah. Interesting. So we need a power for these infantry to attack these guys and then the tank. But I would not waste a power just for that here. Like these powers are gonna be more so held as a threat and only used for a very determining attack. This is the finals of the tournament. You're not gonna be using a power just for like a single vehicle attack. It needs to be deadly. And you'll probably be putting more pressure just by holding that power and creating the threats of it than the actual use of it. As Voice of Akasha waits every single unit. <laughs> uh, this imagery is like moving. Wait, it went up? Yeah, it went up. So maybe, hey, with the power it's in range. <laughs> But maybe in a few turns it can reach uh, any of these three properties. Alright, so he's gonna move downwards actually. Hmm. It would seem to me like Voice of Akasha is more so planning towards a, an HQ threat. Um, oh, as Voice of Akasha starts this capture. Are we gonna interrupt that capture? Double artillery. Are we gonna... Hmm, I guess we can't start this capture because there's already an RT pointing at it. I mean, sure, you can attack it, but then you lose a copter. Hmm. Okay, we're not going to go for that capture, and we're not going to attack any of this. So I think we just lost two infantries and a half for free, pretty much. And got a little, like a sort of a half tank disadvantage to get this one city, to put him 1k ahead. Now we're just amassing everything here, but it seems like, I mean, Igor has definitely more army here than there is from Voice of Akasha. He could definitely pick a side and just go crazy. But as we've seen before, it is, it is kind of tricky. Like remember Talos, he had a big army and he decided to go one side. And then the other army just went in <laughs> and just like collapsed on this, this base, so. Gotta be careful as Voice of Agasha flips the city and Ikogark does not interrupt it. Wow. And we're just gonna set up a defense here. Just okay, we're actually gonna attack over here. There's one tank. We're gonna go like a infantry, a tank from the city, something like that. Yeah, tank, uh, infantry, then tank from the city. Boom. Tank is going to heal up. And then just support it with all these Coptus and Antires. Another artillery. Okay. And we're just going to wait every single unit. So, Inkokar could try to go for the city right now. There's this artillery, which is... You know, again, as we've said multiple times already, it is not pointing at the city, but it is pointing at the tile in front of it. So we could start a capture, put the two behind, then we interrupt and we put the two right there to lock it. And it looks like Igor is going towards the side. Hmm. Maybe we're going to want to go here. Okay, setting up the artillery there to, to attack the city somewhat. Uh, I'm just gonna pull back from over here. Yeah, we're gonna start this capture. Let's see if this army decides to go this way or decides to go this way, actually. Because there isn't that much from Inkokark. Okay. Neither of them are going for any of these two cities. Neither of them is going for this one. And yeah, Voice of Russia does not seem interested in getting this city <laughs> anytime soon. There's just, there's just a lot of units, really. This cop is going to come down. Infantry is going up for some reason. Right. We're going to interrupt here, but no, we're not going to put an artillery to lock that city. Hmm. I'm going to go in with a copter attack, a little infantry attack. We're going to start a capture there. Okay. <laughs> really putting in the, the initiative here by Ingegard, uh, I mean, by Voice of Akasha. And I guess that's why he decided not to set up here because all this army is kind of going this way. It would mean that 
this army could like this army would be undefended and we're gonna make copter mech and an infantry and double hands there okay so Ingugark is gonna sack that infantry are we gonna kill that copter there's really a lot here by voice of akasha there's two anti's pointing at that copter there's no anti from Ingugark, so yeah can't kill that copter maybe with another infantry whoa does not decide to attack here um, it's gonna retreat. Wow. I think it's. I mean, he's probably thinking like, if I attack into this, like I kill this copter, I interrupt this. All these vehicles are gonna be in range, plus a power. I'll, it'll probably wipe out this. Let's see. It doesn't seem like. Could you get some good attacks? This artillery cannot shoot at any vehicle. Uh, these tanks. This tank is not in range. Yeah, there really isn't tanks to... There isn't really tanks in range to do much damage. Like, you can... You can kill this copter, no? You could probably, like... You do copter. You kill this guy with an infantry. You kill it with another... You, I mean, you kill this copter with another infantry. And then you do, like, artillery... Infantry. You kill this infantry. And then you can... Oof, maybe use this tank. You can do, like, copter tank. And that's it. That's, that's all there's left. Because this tank doesn't reach. You would have to use a power... So you would be killing two vehicles. But in response, you would be losing both copters from these entires. You would be losing the tank that you put on the city. And the artillery most likely as well. So you would be losing like four vehicles. So you kill two vehicles and you lose four. And then you have no retaliation. Yes, yeah, probably not a good idea. So that's why you decides to pull back. I'm going to continue the, the capture here. And block... I think this is probably enough. These tanks are blocking and these artillery are not in range to interrupt here. So, yeah. Don't even have to join cap there. Mm, could even start a capture right here. Oh, no, no. no. This, this imagery is in range to interrupt. Yeah. So, currently, Voice of Akasha does have the property lead. It is up to Inkogark to do something. If they just sit still forever and ever, Voice of Akasha will win with the property lead. And Voice of Akasha gets the flip here because it wasn't interrupted. So it puts Voice of Akasha at an even bigger lead, 3k, and gets the, the killer on that copter. So they traded copter for copter pretty much, although this one lived. Meg is going to move up. And it seems like it's a similar scenario here where Inkogar is pointing towards going for this city while deterring Voice of Akasha from getting this one and Voice of Akasha is like, oh, okay, this army is too big for this one so I'm just gonna kinda pull back I'm gonna bring these copters, even the artillery pointing at that city we're gonna even start a capture on this one oof it is very interesting to see how Voice of Akasha has initiative and it's always so small, it's like little by little. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And always very safe, right? Like there, there is never like good attacks for the opponent to do. Now we're gonna wait, wait, wait. And we're getting to the unit limit again. So no, there's no need. I mean, it, it doesn't matter to base kit as base, uh, as voice, of, voice of Akasha is doing. And all these vehicles are kind of like over here in the middle. I think kind of to like protect from this. Maybe also afraid from a super. Uh, only a few are in range to support this this little guy. So I wouldn't be surprised if Inkogari decides to like boop. Interrupt it. We're gonna Yeah, we're gonna interrupt that. Set up the artillery there to deny the flip. And just <laughs> bundle up here in the corner of the map. And we're gonna get these copters flying around. We are Gonna try to set up down here, maybe, for this city now. Since this one has been flipped. And, I mean, to flip this back is gonna be impossible. Like, this, you can always have an artillery over here and you're just never gonna get that city. Like, by, by voice of Akasha. So, yeah, now this army has finished its job and it can start going over here and possibly threaten this area as well. And... 
We're not gonna go for any captures over here. Oof. Intense, intense. Had to turn on the lights because it's getting dark here. And we have Voice of Akasha now. Moving on, moving in, moving in, moving on, moving in, moving in. I think, in this corner. I don't know. It's already like hours of casting. I can't even process words. <laughs> um, just securing more units over here, just having this, the layer of infantry, artillery pointing at that city, more infantry, and then your vehicles. Mm, but yeah, I mean, it, it's up to Inkakark to really flip a city because currently Voice of Akasha has the income lead and makes a bomber, which we've already seen before. He makes a bomber. Oof. We haven't seen the bomber do anything on the other match. We'll see if we'll <laughs> And Inkagark resigns. It's the bomber. It's the bomber by that makes the other person resign. This makes Voice of Akasha the winner of the tournament. Wow. Congratulations to Voice of Akasha. Um, now, what happened? Why did Inkogark resign here? So, Voice of Akasha does have the income lead, although it's just 1k. It, it is a tiebreaker in the case of a day limit scenario. Um, he's a little bit ahead on unit value. I think it would be just better to read what Inkogark has said, because I probably just cannot analyze these guys as well as they can say so. So this is what Inkogark said regarding to why he resigned. He said, down on income, down a whole turn on, on army value. Even if I get a neutral property, I am still behind on army value. You can see that there's like a 20, 26k difference in army value. Just from the little engagements, the little tank first strike that happened over here, the little copter trade. Um, there were just like little engagements that probably started to whittle down that army value. Uh, unlikely that Voice of Akasha will make any huge blunders that let me make a comeback. Yeah, at the top level, high level, it's you just can't really expect the other one to to do a blunder for you to give you a window of opportunity to bring it back. Uh, just too good. Uh, Voice of Akasha has four, five copters in position to move into the center if he chooses. Five copters are one, two, three, four, five. These can just like fly to the middle, I guess, and start to harass this space. Like this couldn't go over here with the support of the copters in the middle, plus the bomber. I have only three, so Voice of Akasha is in a better position to take control over the center of the map if he so chooses. Um, the bomber plus five copters can both threaten my HQ and center bases and pivot south like, if they want to, the copters and the bombers, they can pivot south to threaten, to threaten my corner base if I overcommit to protecting the HQ. Like, if, if he makes too much stuff over here and there's not enough here, then these flying units can come down here and threaten this. So probably this side. No, it's closer to these copters and these bombers, so they can go over here. This always can go like this, and this come over here. So, it was more so of a positional thing. Um, just copter counts as well. I mean, Ingegaard does have one here, two, three, and these two. But these are much, much closer to the middle, so they, they can come like one turn, boop, right here. Uh, and these two are also right here in the middle. So it'll probably be like a little battle here to see who can have the, the middle. That bomber is a huge deal. But yeah, I think also another reason is just, I mean, not, not only did uh, Ingegaard find himself in a disadvantage just like reacting constantly to the tiny movements of voice of akasha and almost being impossible to flip something at this point to like break the the city tie break uh it's also just it, it is a nightmare to play this like it is so uh stally like this is just such a big unit buildup. there's so few tiles to attack from which makes it like it, it just makes it really hard for tactics, you know, it's very hard to get attacks. There's only like two tile wide, one tile wide. Um, you know, this is why you don't see that much in Advanced Wars by Web. The little one tile or two tile maps because it's just really hard to play on. Yeah, you just tanks can't do much. It's all, it's all like artilleries 
and it's really hard to attack it's kind of punishing actually like if you attack it's to your detriment <laughs> because you're attacking into artillery fire or something like that. so i can see also that aspect from a good of like just being mentally drained of like okay not only am i at a disadvantage but i'm also mentally drained from this match that it's gonna be impossible for me to play perfectly and also voice Vagasha make a blunder enough for me to bring it back so congratulations to both because they both played amazing Inkagark almost had a full sweep of winning all four matches in the finals which is insane um, voice of Akasha lost a match against Rip and everyone was saying, oh, Voice of Akasha, the, the legend, the legend, the Voice of Akasha losing. Oh, no, no. Is this, how can this happen? He has never lost. And now he loses to Rip. Wow. wow. And he, he does not let that get into his head. And he still plays to the very best that he can in this last map and wins both matches very, like, definitively, like, very, with a lot of assertiveness. Uh, very well executed, so precise, just like razor sharp precise, just insane. Every tile, every little city, like, no, I'm not gonna go for that city, I'm gonna go for this one, and, and later, I'll, I'll like, keep that one contested for now, when I'm done with this one, I'll move to that one. Like, no need to get greedy, just like, very patiently. And getting the little attacks where, where we can, just a little bit of damage, getting the little 8-4 trade on the tank, if he wants to attack back, then he's gonna get he's gonna lose all of his vehicles. Just always seeing um, where he can start a battle that would be beneficial for him if it does happen. And so then actually going for that little poke, which if they don't go for the, the battle, then he's at a slight advantage, a little half vehicle here, and then another half vehicle over there, three infantries here, there. So always putting a little bit of a unit value lead, uh, slowly but surely. Hello everyone, please welcome our champion of the A Mariner Cup number one, the first standard on-site tournament, uh, our champion, Voice of Akasha. Wow. Voice of Akasha, you there? <laughs> Thanks for the kind words, so I'm happy to be here. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm very glad that you, you've been able to, to be here. Full disclaimer to everyone watching, this is our second time that we're doing this because I had some technical issues the first time that we did this interview, which was like two months ago. And so <laughs> uh, people are gonna notice because there's gonna be a different background, uh, just different things, but yeah. It's been two months since, uh, since we did the first one. And I'm glad that we're able to do it again because uh, the file of the other one was corrupted or something else, so I lost it. So we're gonna do this again. Hopefully, we, we remember enough of the game so we can talk about them, uh, you know, pretty pretty good. Um, how are your how, how do you feel for being the the winner of the first uh, a Mariner Cup of the of the site? It's of course nice to win the tournament. Uh, in this case, I'm also particularly fortunate to be able to win despite having a, a loss as well due to the round robin format in the finals and ended up pulling it out in the second round of it. True. And you were you were facing out against a lot of really good players. Uh, uh, of course, it, it was a pretty stacked finals between you and Inkogark and Rip and Talos and this other player that I don't remember the, the name uh, had Chinese symbols. Also pretty good. It was like an like an old god, I think, right? Like from before. But beat uh, Operation Mechstorm, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so definitely a pretty stacked finals. So a lot of really, really big players. Um, did you prepare a lot for the, the two maps in the finals? Mm, I didn't prepare too much for the first round. I usually look at the map and then depending on how much time I have, I will maybe map up the opening, map out the opening and yeah, decide on the CO. But after losing in the first round, I decided to spend a bit more in the second round. <laughs> and I think the increased analysis did help in the games then. Okay, so in, in, in the first one, you kind of just went into it and improvised a little bit. 
A little bit, yeah. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can uh, go ahead and start looking at that one. Um, I I think I'm just gonna skip the the one against the Sami player because that was a very short game, and that player dropped out. And and I'm gonna have to change the colors here. I'm sorry, Rip. I do Cobalt Eyes. Since the champion, I, I'm gonna keep you with your colors. Uh, this was a pretty iconic match. I know uh, it had a it had a lot of uh, rumble in in Discord and and off Discord as well. <laughs> People were talking about this match and how you're you're a legend. I mean, you are a legend of of the, of the side. You've been on the side for so long, and you definitely a, a very part a, a very important part. Uh, uh, of the community and of the history of Advanced Wars by Web because you've been playing tournaments like since, I don't know, two, 10 years ago or more. <laughs> uh, but you have this, uh, definitely this title of being unbeatable uh, and that just you have like no, no losses at all, like a complete win streak. And then people were seeing. Uh, that you were in, kind of in a rough spot here and then eventually losing in this match and they were like, oh no, what happened with Akasha? But that's totally normal, like people, you know, Wiz Akasha is, is not a robot, but he, he's, a, he's a person, he's a very talented person, he, he, you know, he, he, can, he can lose and it happens. And Rip is also a really great player, like I, I think it also shows uh, that both are really great players and being a great player doesn't mean that you always have to win, like sometimes you lose, that's, that's just part of it and kind of makes it a little bit more natural I guess um, I don't know if you had any thoughts <laughs> well uh, I did notice that people were watching the game a lot I think funny enough it's actually not the most followed game on the side because mm. there were less people active than during the bracket which had a more followed game but mm. yeah yeah it was an interesting game I think the the best part about this is <laughs> it's really the epitome of a uh, max mirror just a lot of turns of tanks smashing into each other. Yeah. Uh, a lot of interesting tactics and also power management that is, um, I would say, a bit less troublesome than the power management in, let's say, math damage or eagle matchup. So that <laughs> I find it always a lot more healthy for the game. Yeah, as for the actual gameplay, then. So. As I mentioned before, I, I did some preliminary analysis on the map when deciding on a CO. I think it was pretty clear for most players that it's going to be some sort of aggressive trade-off. So three out of four players just ended up, um, four out of five picked max. Mm -hmm. mm. How I originally envisioned the game to develop like naturally is closer to one of the other finals games um, between Inkugark and Talos. Yeah. Where the airport base basically ends up being isolated and being a bit in this three versus one base scenario, but not really because the, the three bases that are connected still have to also fight for the center. Mm -hmm. So I kind of... Um, I planned my early game to, to prepare for death, but I ended up a bit overlooking um, the threat of the airport base with the two base side um, collapsing on this mountain base there. Oh and yeah. This is then also what happened very early in the game. So if you just move one turn forward, yeah, exactly. So here, um, it starts by me getting my tank to hit KO'd because I finished capture instead of interrupting the comm tower, which was probably the, the better play there. And so this is already not good because he gets a fairly reasonable engage in the air. And that makes it difficult for me to preserve my unit count and also finish those captures. So one of them I have to interrupt myself in order to strike a tank from a city. And the other one, I have to move to prevent him from blocking my base with his full HP tank. But I ended up mismoving one of my infantry, which allowed him to 
use the 2 HP tank in the end to just block my base anyway. And mm. this is where the trouble starts for me. So yeah, oh, yeah. This, the initial first strike is something I needed to block off with infantry. And this is now a very difficult situation to play. Wow, so if you um, would have put the infantry in here in front of the base, it would have been better, right? Um, so the, the full HP infantry in front of the base actually gets one shot by his full HP tanks, so that doesn't quite Ooh. help. But it's the other infantry that's like on the forest below his one HP tank. I think it was that one I needed to move it to block his other tank instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somewhere over there. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, because now you start, like, this is cancelling this tank pretty much. You have to, like, shoot at something or base base block. Wow. And I, I remember you also mentioning a lot that uh, in our first take <laughs> that you, your plan was trying to play for the sides a lot, for these two cities over here and these two cities over here, which is why you had invested a lot with the infantry, and also with the tanks, because you were like shooting with tanks over here and had three tanks, uh, but maybe underestimated how important and uh, strong it was this area. Right? Or something like that? Yeah, basically. So I think with a bit more investment into um, this part of the map, or at least more accurate positioning with my units, uh, it might have still developed into this um, scenario where the airport base get isolated, in which case I have a bit of a, a tempo advantage because I already have the two cities there, for example, in this mm, small corner there. But without it, I'm not, I was then forced to defend on my uh, weak part of the map instead. And it did end up working uh, a bit because I did get a reasonably good um, CO power in a few turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember, you go full on uh, first strikes on everything, every tank. I think um, it, it's crazy how much of a tank map it is, right? We, we only see infantry and tanks <laughs> for now. Well, it's it's hard to build anything else in, in a max mirror and the airport is just, let's say, average on this map. True. At least for this game. But yeah, yeah later. I, I go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I, so I managed to mainly delay my the loss of my base with the CO power, so and also managed to engage on his base. So tempo-wise, it's fine, and value-wise, it's also fine. Problem is unit count-wise, it doesn't really help, um, and income-wise, neither. But it gives me the the fuel to keep on playing. Let's say for the for the next five turns or so. True. Yeah, you were able to actually injure most of Rip's tanks. Like you have four, five healthy tanks here and four over here. And he has one healthy here and one healthy here. Because all the rest are 4 HP or 2 HP. This was such a tactical game. It's crazy. And I think that was showcased by, by you and by Rip. Um, especially Rip by finding these like sacrifice chaos. I think this turn, right? He goes for like attacks like this again with a super, so it's like crazy max power. Sacrificing, sacrificing, and then same here, just like using the injured tanks and then keeps blocking. <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty, pretty crazy. At what point do you feel like? Um, you were kind of losing tempo of, of the match. Was it maybe here in the powers or before, a little bit later? Um, so in retrospect, I already misplayed. So I did have a chance with this CO power turn, but I misplayed a bit in the positioning. So mm -hmm. because what I needed to do was to also prepare for base blocking him. So that's the only way I can I can basically equalize or maybe pull ahead is if mm -hmm. I can get a cheap base block off with infantry. And unfortunately, um, my very left tank there that I moved off the base, 
I moved it a bit too far away from <laughs> from his base. Oh, this one that goes over here. No, so yeah, the base tank that I moved seven up. This one should have gone. Where um, it just needed to, yeah, somewhere where those infantry was, um, because I needed it to enable. No wait, I think this is one turn too too early actually. Um, oh okay. This is the max blast. No, yeah, it's. Because your plan was to do what with the with this tank, the base tank. Um, I needed to move it onto the forest instead, so the the tank that is now blocking his medium tank. So, because I wanted to block it with an infantry, but I couldn't because then his entire could just one shot it, and then his medium tank moves out and one shots the tank anyway, and mm. he gets another build on his base. And in this, so I blocked with a tank, so that his medium tank has to shoot and he can't build anything. But it would be way better to do this with an infantry instead. And that's because my tank is too far away from that forest. I see, yeah. So instead of going up here, it could have gone um, either here, here. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Yeah, so here. Or here. And then you wanted to kill this infantry, bring this infantry over here, like interrupt the capture, and then put the tank on the forest. And the other tank here, I'm guessing? Oh yeah, no, and over here. If I remember correctly, this would have then blocked off his tank properly, so to speak, his medium tank. And maybe he moves it off anyway and then builds something else, or maybe another heavy tank. And then the game just looks very different. Not necessary that I'm winning, because I think then he gets to interrupt the, my computer capture, for example, and mm -hmm. delays even more of my income. But I do have, I would have more power available in the center where I needed it then. Yeah. And then comes the, the, <laughs> the highlight of the match, sacrificing five units to get the KO there, which apparently it was a roll. It wasn't a guarantee. Well, it was the close enough to, I think over 99%. So mm. no way to not go for it. Um, <laughs> but in the end, it's not that much of a swing compared to how flashy it is, I would say. So not that it's a bad move, uh, it's a very good move, of course, yeah. since getting a base is free. But I mostly wouldn't be able to get more value out of this part of the map anyway, even if he does it more conservatively uh, one yeah. turn later or so. So it's mainly a trade-off between um, some unit count and maybe value uh, in, in exchange for some tempo that he can move on to, 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 uh, to his own base sooner. Yeah. Yeah, and to move on to the next stage of the of the map, which is the, like after trading the bases, this whole stage of the HQ, <laughs> which was very tense. <laughs> I wonder how you were feeling during this time, because you had many attempts of trying to get the HQ. <laughs> Yes, so I think by the time my infantry actually managed to move on to the HQ, uh, I already knew it was too late. Um, I I think this turn here, um, I could have maybe played a bit better. So actually the previous turn, um, I could have positioned myself a bit more aggressively. And depending on his response, um, it might have been enough to enable an attack that's actually strong enough to put me back into the game. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, he might also have uh, found a proper answer for that. Since he did always position his units um, properly when it comes to the to making sure that I can not first drag and also can't move forward for free a lot. So you usually had to dive with powers. Yeah, the fact that you both had the super almost ready makes it even more complicated, no? Position-wise, because you have to be careful of the plus two and the extra firepower. Everything just kind of explodes. 
in this uh, mirror matchup with two towers. So you wanted to have a better position this last turn, right? You wanted to have, uh, hmm, I guess maybe, what, did, did you want to have an infantry one tile closer so it could then do one, two, three, and then one, two, three? Is that what you, what you meant before? I think it's mainly the, the tank on the base is a bit too defensive. Hmm. I should have blocked it with the one HP tank instead. I think that was in range and have mm -hmm. this somewhere more far forward. Maybe finish off his 2 HP tank or something. Yeah, that makes sense. And then he has to pull back. You advance with a super. And he retaliates with another super. And then there's a huge back and forth here. Um, it's just the, the income here. Now by rip, I think he was able to hold on. But then he had a, an amazing... It's just crazy because people were like, "Oh, Wes Vagash is dead." Wes Vagash. I'm like, it's not, it's not over. Like, <laughs> it can't really go to anyone's. Uh, th these kind of games are so tight, right? Like, a very, a, a very slight oversight from Rip, and then you can get the win because you were putting all the right amounts of pressure onto the HQ. Uh, you had a very clear strategy in mind of what to do after this whole base trade. And you go for this one last block right here to go for the for that cap. Imagine, oof, if it was a 10 HP, oof. Um, but he's able to, to break through with a power. Uh, it was just an insane match, honestly. Just very hard now against maybe the two base side. Yes, I think strategically it actually worked out very well for me that I was the one that is able to pressure HQ despite losing my base earlier. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't quite have enough fuel left in the tank um, once this income kicked in. Yeah. So that's why I, I needed this, um, this better positioning the few turns before. Because if this puts me one, maybe a bit more than one tank ahead, then maybe it could have led to a bit stronger attack and enable me to get a proper block off in this um, in front of his base, of course. But Max can always one shot everything or nearly everything, so that's always difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe if you were able to get a hold of this one tile or the city tile, and then you're able to put a neo tank, then. There's no way for Max to break through, even with a super with a Neo tank. I guess you would need a mega tank, but be a little bit too much. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought this was super interesting because you were really pushing that aspect of the map into where, you know, Rip is the strongest. Like this is a two base, usually you're the strongest there, but because of this little choke area, it's a little bit awkward. And I felt like you were doing a really good job there, but Rip was always able to find a hole and and there was, there was a, a lot of sacrifices, a lot of unit sacrifices that I thought was really interesting. Uh, like that tank sacrifice to then KO with a medium tank. Oh no, with the other tank. And then breaks through. Just finding those things were really interesting. And then GG's. Yeah, Any, Rip uh, always. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Rip always made my, uh, very good use of his wounded units so that I had to waste shots on overkitting them mm. or he just moved them, uh, w went back and repaired them. Yeah, true. Uh, so like the little, um, the GG. <laughs> that was clever. Um, any final thoughts on this uh, match or lessons that you might have learned and then we can move on to the next one? No, it was a, a very good game and fun to play. And I'm, I'm glad it didn't happen during the bracket. <laughs> True, because here you can get a loss and still get away with a win. Uh, it also made it pretty interesting. Um, you having that loss there, um, then in the second round, uh, we had Incogarg with two wins. And then you, Rip and Talos all with one win. And so there was like a lot of options of who could, who could win the whole uh, tournament. In the, in the second round. So it could have been you, it could have been Inkugari, it could have been Talos, if I'm not wrong. Um, 
Uh, oh, and Rip as well, I think. But yeah, it was um, it was like anyone could have won there, um, except our signing player. But let's move on to the the next match. I had this on the the Talos one. I this map. Um, I want to hear your thoughts on this map again. You were talking about uh, before we started recording how you th you thought the map could play better if it was uh, smaller. I think you were saying. Yeah. So basically, um, this map I found actually very interesting because it has a lot of interactions that I haven't really noticed in many other maps. So there is this um, fake front, you could call it, in the tower area. Hmm. We are the stronger side, so I, I'll call the top left and bottom right the, the strong side for this for now, even though it's the same amount of uh, production facilities. Okay. But yeah, so it has to invest a bit into um, actually getting the tower and the city there. and But once it does that, it has to move away. So it's a bit of a race to, to do this as cleanly, quickly and efficiently as possible. So I think that's the one or uh, one of the unique features of the map. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is that unlike many other mixed maps, I felt it was actually very difficult to commit for a, to a brawl because any sort of fighting was extremely high committal. Mm -hmm. And this led to many of the games looking a bit stally for spectators, and I guess, if you, um, yeah, the units did end up staring at each other a lot. Yeah. But it was still very tense in the terms of which threats are on the map, because there are a bunch of um, contested cities that are not really worth it to overinvest into um, contesting, because the income is just too high. You can't really sacrifice unit count or army value to mm -hmm. capture them, um, but you just need to thread very carefully because the, the first fight is also likely the, the last fight on this map. Yeah. Play it properly. <laughs> yeah, and also like very few, if, if any powers were used, I, I think in all in all the matches here, because there's that big, big unit buildup and at a certain point, like you say, if you start a fight, you have to commit everything there because that will be the only fight of the match. <laughs> you either win or lose yep. right there. Yeah, as soon as you commit to, to one front, you pull away resources on other fronts, so they are immediately vulnerable and there's barely any space to retreat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, what I mentioned before is I think the, the map would play really well if it was like 22 or 23k income, something in, in this direction. Because mm. then the cities just matter a bit more. So you have a bit more leeway in what to prioritize. So you think like if the map stayed the exact same, how the, the terrain is the, and the layer and everything, except having less income. So a, a few less cities maybe? Mm, you would probably also have to shrink it a bit to, to accommodate this. But mm. for example, I like the general setup of the HQ area and how the two base side is actually so vulnerable to the airport mm. and in general has difficulty reinforcing the um, the parts of the map that it needs to. Yeah, true. The the two base seem to be the, the most awkward, no? It seemed like uh, two separate one bases almost because it was hard for them to coordinate because the vehicles are, are so split away and there's no room to front switch or, or anything. And air units seem so strong due to all the sea tiles and mountains and rivers, as well as the artillery. I loved the use of the artillery by by all of you in this map. It was just so, so much fun. This whole stare off of this city with the mountain, it was always so hilarious to see. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I also thought it was actually kind of amusing because I picked Cole uh, and Talos picked Jake, but I ended up locking my, my cities with artillery and I think <laughs> I had more artillery for a, a fair bit of the match. It was kind of amusing. True, um, true. Of course, um, I think in the end Cole turned out to be a fair bit better than Jake because of the, the importance of air that you mentioned. 
So B-copters and bombers are the only units that can really front switch. And yeah. if you have movement on them uh, during your powers and your opponent doesn't, then you just get center control for free. Yeah, true. Yeah, because you can be... What is it? Eight tiles away from the copters while threatening to hit them, but they can't threaten to hit you back, so you get free positioning. It's just so strong. And then this match, this is where it really gets to, to that stall that you were talking about. Just a big unit build up. The towers got um, to their rightful owners, I guess. You do get this city, you have both of them, but you're, you're locking it. I think, yeah, you just start racking up a lot of unit count, trying to, like, contesting these cities right here, and maybe this one as well, and the mirror ones, but you... Yeah, I think you... the, the major ahead. difference is um, a bit of what I mentioned before. So uh, in this tower front, um, Talos basically invested a, lo a lot more into this part of the map, but I got both tower and city fairly in a reasonable time frame anyway mm. and on the other part of the map i did not in have to invest as much into that side into the weak side but i still managed to defend my city i think until the end of the game even yeah i think he then uh, friend switched all, all the stuff that he had here over here to the top right i think because he had you're right he had this copter he had the artillery initially so he had a, a bigger investment and you won the artilleries, <laughs> always one turn away, lock. Then there was the other one here, this one. You interrupt and you lock. <laughs> but yeah, you're able to hold that city. And then, oh, this is the, the big turn, I think. So he makes a medium tank here in the middle, um, which I think is fair. This map is not very tank, like tanks don't do much here, I guess. So I think it makes a little sense to start doing medium tanks as well because you know even though they're they're slower they can one hit KO some stuff and you're not front switching that much which light tanks are good at but then you put this pressure you get this city so you have both of them you have the nice income advantage and then you have the positioning of the copters everywhere he can't he has to stay away and then you got the bomber. And it looks like he uh, in this turn he kind of switches over over here to kind of attack you where you're the weakest. Um, but then you actually go and attack and respond with a bomber over here, and you have full control of the middle, right? And it's like, what are you gonna do now? <laughs> yeah, I think there are generally like two fronts on this map where I can reasonably win the game and these are the two that you mentioned you can you can try to contest this corner area with your two base if you have enough resources for that mm -hmm. or you can actually use the strong airport set to, to overrun the two base which is what i was going for here i did have the option um, a few turns ago i think to also instead pressure his top right and try to um, capture his cities there but I simply didn't want to be dragged into combat there, and instead just go for the go for the win, I guess. I feel like you do something very interesting, um, which happens a lot in the next match that we're gonna look at the the one against Inkogard, which is you go for these tank attacks. That it's like it, it's okay because it's outside of tank range, but it is covered by copters. And so you, you kind of find those little attacks where it's like, okay, fine, you have coverage with the copters, but are you gonna send a copter? I have the anti-airs. Like, even if it's on a city, you still take that attack. Uh, is that to kind of force this thing, like of him sending a copter to kill a copter and maybe to generate charge to then uh, have that threat of positioning because of the power? Mm. So here specifically the, the charge played a big role because I wanted the CO power to be either charged or in range to be charged. Mm. Um, but it's it's not exactly a sacrifice since I do come out ahead in the end. Um, 
it's just in general that the concept of leveraging having stronger coverage, I guess, since uh, copters are worse coverage than tanks and tanks are worse coverage than artillery. So whenever you can attack something and then cover the unit stronger than whatever your opponent's coverage is, then it's often part of a good attack. Not not always on its own, but it's a fairly common pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then he doesn't even go for the for the entire kill. Yeah. So I destroy a copter and like half a tank for my tank in the end. Yeah, that is true. And that's how you you started gaining little um, vehicle advantages or unit value advantages uh, in the next match, which we're gonna we're gonna go to in a second. But yeah, you kind of close it out here. Uh, you were saying that this. Like over here, you're overrunning the the space, especially this one, right? And then, if you lose the space, then all this area is just gonna lose out, and also you have the HQ eventually. This was a this was a really fun one. I, I thought it was very it was very funny how um, this whole interaction. Talos goes to one side with the medium tank and um, most of the army, and then instead you're like, okay, I'm gonna attack here, and then I'll just cover everything with a bomber, like instant buy instant action like <laughs> it's right there uh covering kind of everything plus the copters yeah and because sup is upcoming he, he doesn't have any squares to put his units on true <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would have liked to play the uh, the follow-up turn because like wrong power turns are always very satisfying yeah <laughs> the turns where you get to destroy everything and close out the game yeah. yeah, pretending to be eager. <laughs> true, true. Uh, we can move on to the, to the third one. Last one. Let's make Ingegark the penguins. Um, and this one played uh, somewhat similarly, I, I think, in the, in the beginning. I think there was a bit more of artillery shenanigans. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't. I don't remember this one so much in the early game, but I, I feel like it was a bit more even uh, this one in the early game than maybe the one against Talos. What What do you think? Yeah, this one was very close in general. So I think the the biggest difference is that um, in the early game, Inkogak skipped a bit of the early captures in order to deny me that city in the on my weak front. This one. In order to save himself some time, exactly like the. And I ended up instead then sacrificing infantry to delay his comm tower instead. Mm. Mm. Even though I think it put me one infantry uh, behind on that part of the map, I, I needed the tempo to develop my two base side instead. I didn't want to respond to his tank yet there. And so we entered a fairly even mid game. I did have the advantage of earlier copter, which keeps being a slight point in my advantage, I think, for the for most turns here. Yeah, and it kind of takes you to that that later stage um, of the map that you had that you have in plan of just controlling the airspace uh, with copters, so you can have better positioning. So you already have these copters <laughs> already in position. Yeah, but without any other advantages, of course, it's difficult to do too much with the copters on their own. Um, I also had a bit of a misplay earlier with my first copter from positioning wise, mm. because I had wanted to force him to build either an end to, I guess, to build an entire on his weak uh, space, but or get the infantry hit. But since I didn't move my first copter uh, correctly, I didn't threaten it at all. It just moved three tiles back. I and remember I think this. that cost me a bit because I felt slightly be ahead before that. Mm, but afterwards I felt it was at best even again. Because now he managed to, or was able to like freely build two vehicles on the other part of the map, which put me un under more pressure there. And I didn't want to be pressured on the other side of the map since I had just built a copter there. 
I also just wanted to harass a bit. But instead he gets to build, I think, just entire plus copter. And cover and prevents my copter there from getting any, any free hits. Yeah, because you wanted to you wanted to put this copter instead of the, on the forest, you wanted to put it on these planes. So that this infantry, wherever it went, it would be in range of the copter. And so he would he'd be forced to make a an anti air to defend the infantry or get a free shot. But instead, I guess he makes an infantry, and he can make the yeah he makes an infantry. It's it's the it's the little things, <laughs> and then he can make this yeah what you're saying. And then you say you go for this uh, com tower attack over here. You can get this city for free. But yeah, it's like, it, it, it always, it, it's what you said, like this front, it's like uh, you get this early from the weakest base, but then you have to retreat because there's just no way of realistically holding it on in the long term because this base is gonna get it, it's just stronger. And then this one also now is, it gets into a big stall. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's not a lot well, it's of, still a very or... tense scenario because um, if yeah. you noticed, so both Inkugag and me actually disrupted our own captures um, of this neutral city, the, the mirrored ones in the center. This and ones. the. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these two. And the reason for that is basically, in this matchup in particular, where both of us have access to move powers, the easiest way to lose the game is if you get pins attacked on your two base side. Mm. And in the vast majority of advanced post games, pins attacks are not really a thing, because mm. the maps don't support them, and logistically what happens is that the pins part just overwhelms one side and then blocks off the other side. But due to the terraining of this map and the reinforcement patterns, pincering is actually like somewhat um, feasible, especially if you have move power boost. And I think so from my side, I just didn't want to give him an opportunity to attack there easily by ganging up on my infantry. And I assume the, the same goes for him, for why he yeah. retreated from his capture. Yeah, because he had these these free hits, now tank infantry and instead with an infantry. Um, and same here for him over here. Yeah, you both had the same reaction. And some people will still go. Uh, the, the, some people will still do it. They'll still go for the capture, <laughs> and then they might try to uh, interrupt it. <laughs> but you guys decided that it was more important the the unit count and the healthy units than a single city. Yeah, at at those high income levels. Uh... You don't really want to throw away your units mm. uh, to, to gain captures. Of course, the, the unit count is also high, but since you have so many fronts, you actually need, the, need them anyway. And then here you do what I was talking about earlier. You go for this, <laughs> this tank poke right here. Um, I guess Inkogar was trying to like really try to get this city. You know, he put the capture and then blocked it off to ensure that he gets it, even if you uh, go for this attack. I'm sure he knew that you could go for this. Uh, he just wanted to guarantee getting the capture, maybe. Kind of forcing you maybe to split off your forces. But you you kind of get away with this damage. He gets the city, he, he still pulls back. The, so this is pretty normal, I feel like. That, that can happen a lot. But then you decide to poke again. Like you, you kind of go again and you do tank infantry and attack with a tank. Even though he still has another tank, two copters, this healing tank, more to come next to the airport. But you do have a pretty big army. It looks like the, the chances of the pincer strike are maybe not there, so you feel more encouraged to, or less afraid to maybe take control of this area and just poke at this army and make a little bit of a unit value difference, no? Yeah, it's not exactly the, the front where I assumed that I would maybe try to go for the advantages, um, but since I managed to repel him on both sides basically, as you said, then the, there was no real pincer threat anymore. 
And while I couldn't commit heavily to, to one side, I could start with these, mm, yeah, trying to get some value, basically. And of course, I also wanted to get the city eventually, <laughs> since I was also giving up the, the city there. Even I could though, have tried to okay. hit that lock that was an artillery, but yeah. Yeah, this was like even more like you, you really doubled down. You kept going for the pokes and uh, trying to go for the flip, even in range of his artillery with his copter. If there was an anti air here, maybe, would you feel like it wouldn't be worth it to do this? Mm, it would be more difficult to go for it, definitely. Yeah. Depends on what mm. unit is it's replacing. Yeah, maybe like this tank. If this tank that was made was an anti air. But he still goes for the copter. Oh, he actually retreats the, the artillery. Just pulls back. And you end up getting the city. Like all that little, uh, the, those tiny little pushes, you actually do get that city. Um, I guess it's just because of the overwhelming vehicles. You were able to kind of defend from here. Uh, I think you give up the city. But you get this one instead. Yeah, I did um, consider trying to keep this city as well by locking it with artillery, as I said. But the risk of getting engaged one felt really high to me. Mm. So it wouldn't be a, a true pincer where, the, where his two parts of his army actually connect, but it would still get both of them into battle. And I wanted to avoid that, especially with SUPs coming up and making the calculations quite difficult. Yeah. So I'd, I'd rather just trade at the cities and the entire exchange gave me a bit of a value advantage anyway. True. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was definitely a good um, little vehicle trade that you had there. Even the artillery had to pull back, they didn't, they didn't even get a shot out. And after the whole thing, you stay 1k ahead, so you could in theory just like wait until they limit, but you decide not to. <laughs> you decide to make a bomber. <laughs> it's like you, you have bombers in both of the matches on this map. I thought that was very cool. Well, in, in general, when you can't make progress with light vehicles, you should usually consider tacking up to something. Mm -hmm. And bombers are just the, the most consistent threat on this map. Um, I had also considered a, a new tank from the two base side in on some turn, but mm. that is very easy to backfire because if it, if it doesn't achieve uh, what you build it for, then it suddenly gets very cleanly countered with a bomber. And that bomber is then very efficient. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, if you make a Neo tank over here, it just screams to make a bomber, right? In response, it's very easy. I, I can see why you say the, the Neo tank because it can help you one hit KO, like break through the, these walls of the the tanks, especially because the infantry you can kill them with anti-air, maybe copter infantry, but then you can kill a tank with a neo tank or an, or an anti-air or, an, or an artillery. But yeah, it's like it kind of it kind of calls to them to make a bomber, and maybe you don't want them to have a bomber because then they can threaten this whole area. Bombers here, psh, yeah, definitely go crazy. Do you think like a, a later, like if this kept going, would it be bomber, bomber, maybe fighters? Like, would we see a, a, a sort of high funds almost <laughs> kind of composition on this map? Mm, I do think that uh, building a fighter is correct here for Inkugark because otherwise my cop, uh, bomber just sits in the center and does whatever it wants and mm -hmm. has way too much freedom. So I imagine it would be bomber fighter and then eventually when one side wouldn't be able to hold your base anymore, that side would be forced into a mega tank then. Hmm. Yeah, probably this base right here. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and then after this, Inkogark resigns. Um, I guess, well, I, I, I put on screen what he had a uh, said on Discord like the explanation of how you had like more air control plus the extra property. Um, 
also got a nice uh, value trade. But yeah, amazing, amazing run. Even in this map that was really, really complicated, I think. For, for a lot of people, and for me too as well, I, I felt like after seeing you guys play here, I was like, mm, okay, this map is a bit too choky uh, for it to be, like it's maybe not as good as other maps could be in this scenario. I feel like the last map was maybe more, uh, more suitable maybe. Maybe it was a little bit too tank heavy, like it was too open in the middle, so it's just way too tank centric. Uh, and like whoever controls the middle kind of controls the game. Here it was, it was a little bit of the opposite. How like one was too open, and this one was too too closed off. <laughs> we had like two opposite maps, kind of thing. Uh, but what are your like maybe last thoughts on on both maps of all these finals? Yeah, I think. Uh... For most players, there will be different things that they value in, map, uh, in maps. I mm -hmm. think both maps were fine in the regards that it was very unlikely to reach a state where no progress can be made at all, because there are always some natural goals at, at all parts of the of the game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the first map was a lot more likely to devolve into a brawl, which then tests your tactical acumen. And the second one was mostly going to be positional standoff, unless right. um, the players go for re really sharp openings. Because mm. the funnel after the two games that um, that you didn't show from the other players, they actually also ended very quickly because the there was just a very quick fight after the opening. And I think, for example, Talos managed to to win with the fighter. <laughs> <laughs> and to support his HQ rush, I thought that was very neat. Yeah, I remember uh, Talos against Rip. He had gone for the for a little pincer here. I went for the HQ attack. Um, and then I can't remember the other one. I think you was it Inkogark and Rip, maybe. Um, no, so it was Stream Aaron, so the, the Chinese player mm. who played against Rip, and he tried to play very aggressive into the the comp tower front. And then got either got punished for it or, or booted. Then went behind. Yeah. Well, um, let me look up what what your um, what your trophy is because I can't remember. <laughs> but I, I made tactical play of waiting until the first contest was over so I could <sighs> get an asteroid trophy. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you got the other asteroid mech. So you waited and waited until we got the first, uh, all, all the new armies being added. And why did you get the mech instead of the, the infantry? Mm, good question, no particular reason. <laughs> I guess I, I wanted the slightly bigger unit. Okay, and it looks cooler maybe, the mech. I thought it maybe, very... I, I thought maybe you would go for the the bomber, the Amber Blaze bomber, because it kind of closed out both of your games in the last round. Yeah, was that I'm... was my original intent actually, but then I remembered that there was a new faction coming up, <laughs> so I figured it would be nice to to have a trophy of that faction. Nice, nice. Okay, well that was awesome. Um, maybe if you have anything. Any last thoughts that maybe you you want to give out to to players to viewers, and then we can close out the interview. Well, I just want to mention that I'm happy that the site is still going so strong after all this time, and thank Walker, Matheson, the other developers, and of course the map committee for the work they're putting in. And yeah, it's it's looking good for advanced us by web, I would say. It really is. It really is. We have so many things. So many new things going on. Now we have also the, the army contest going on. We have the on-site tournaments. We got the live league and so many more things to come, um, I'm sure. So definitely a good time for a launch by web. And thank you, Luis Wakasha, for being here, for giving us your thoughts and your insights on, on the matches and the maps and, and all these tactical and strategical uh, decisions. Uh, so yeah, thanks for being here. Um, thank you all for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye. Bye.